do, do. It's Brian Phillips. We have a box. It's huge. Don't want to give anything away since you surely haven't seen in the thumbnail. Don't read the title. Don't read the title or look at the pictures. <laughs> Just wait. It'll be a big surprise. We are super excited to finally be bringing you this plane that we have known about forever. And here on Brian Phillips RC, we love doing airliners. Oh yeah, baby, it's the twin 70 millimeter J65 from XFly. Super excited to bring this plane. It is something that I have personally been waiting for ever since I heard it existed. And don't worry, there's a competitive offering that's got some sort of a VJ involved. Don't worry, it's not that much better. Not to be confused with some other branding, this thing looks awesome. From XFly on Brian Phillips RC. Look at this. Obviously, it is absolutely gorgeous general aviation style with twin EDFs. Let's read the specs while you look at the front of the box. It is a pretty sizable box. Of course, this plane is split in half, so it's a pretty big plane. How big exactly is it, you might ask? 1,766 millimeters or 69 and a half inches. The overall length is about 1,768 millimeters. Also, it's 69.6 .6 millimeters, so there's something magical there. Looks like the uh, ESCs are two 60 amp ESCs with an eight amp BEC. If you don't know what a BEC, it's a battery eliminator circuit, which runs all the electronics, including the, the LEDs, the retracts, the flaps, ailerons, all that stuff. So then it looks like we have a flying duration of five to eight minutes. That's pretty good for a bigger plane. And this flies on 6S, five through 6,000 milliamp hours. So I guess in this case, what I usually like to do if I know I'm gonna be flying or super excited to fly is I will get a battery go, uh, going on the charger. So this is a 7,006S. So we'll go ahead and start this on the S2200. Yes, this is still the charger I like. It is my go-to. Even though the screen popped off and is falling down a little bit, I'm too lazy to fix it. I probably could fix it in 10 minutes, but I just don't wanna waste my time because I don't really care. Otherwise, I love this charger. It has been great. You'll note that we have a bunch of other chargers literally flanking it on all sides. And I rarely go to them because I just like the way that this one works. The dual charger, 200 watts is plenty good. So I'm gonna plug in a 5000 6S. Let's find one that's maybe a little bit less plump. And we're gonna plug this one in. Oops, that's a gen one. We're going for a gen two without the balance lead. So it's quicker. And that is why I like gen two because you plug them in and you're done. So now back to the rest of the unbox. Obviously, we're gonna set this thing up with the radio. We're gonna use the NX8, and I haven't decided what we're doing for receiver yet. Kind of depends on the wing type. I've got the old trusty AR631 because this thing doesn't have any sort of stabilizer included. It's just a plug and play. Or an AR637T, which is gonna give us telemetry with voltage pack level, which will be very nice on a twin battery chewing EDF. But if we wanna go crazy, and really have the ultimate performance. We might wanna go up to eight full channels and just to be confused, a little bit more. Eight channels actually means 10. There's two additional channels that are above and beyond the pluggable channels. So eight pluggable usable channels, six pluggable usable channels, two additionals on top. Same thing with the 631. The only difference is you don't get full telemetry data on this unless you were using AV and ESCs which would be sweet, but we currently don't have a twin 60, we have a twin 40. Twin 40, you can set up thrust reverse, which would be pretty freaking sweet in this plane, but we'll see what we've got in our bag of tricks for now. We have the Air 637T, full telemetry, boop, 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 beep, 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 very involved. Also altitude, which is something that you guys like, I know. And then this thing here, this would just give you two additional usable channels, so you could set up different wing types. Just not sure what I'm gonna do yet on that. But just to give you a quick overview, we'll be thinking about that as we go through our Unbox Build and Radio setup, just kind of in view, reviewing what the wing type is. Obviously here on Brian Phillips RC, the best thing you could do to support us is like the videos, come back for more, click the bell for notifications. But if you wanna support us financially, there's three or four different ways you can buy the planes from the links in the video description below. We always link to the current video 
uh, the plane that we're reviewing and whoever the distributor was, manufacturer, plant, whatever, guy down the street that makes them, they'll be linked at the top. And then down below we have master links to some of their competitors just to make sure everybody stays on their toes and is serving you as best they can because nothing like a little healthy competition to keep everybody on their toes. But we're gonna give a special thanks to BitGo Hobby. We've been working with them for a few years and they have been good to work with and they sent us this plane. So we appreciate you guys at BitGo Hobby and thank you for your sacrifice for our pleasure. I hate it when that happens. I'm super excited about this plane. So I'm kind of chomping at the bit to get it out of the box here and I've already ripped one of the foam inserts. Everything looks really good so far. We heard some clanging around. I think it was oh, yep, that's that, that noise. So if you get it from the UPS man and it's like, like oh. yeah. don't worry. Just that. It's just that. Carbon fiber wing joiners, wing spars. And that is some sweet looking art, I gotta say. This plane looks plump and delicious. I cannot wait to dive into it. So we're gonna do that right now with you here on Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching guys. We know you've been with us for a long time, many of you, and our channel's come a long ways. We now use lav mics. <laughs> if you don't get the joke, just go back yep, and watch one of our old up. videos. Yes. One of the thousands. Okay, good manual from XY. One of the things that we have noticed as the com competition has gotten so fierce among all the competitive offerings in the RC world is that the manuals have gotten to be much better. Mm -hmm. Less Changlish, more English, which mostly. is good. Yep. Mostly. That's helpful. Unless, of course, it's coming from a Chinese brand directly and there's no English interpreter involved like this one. That being said, they do heck of a beautiful drawing. Look at that thing. That is so gorgeous. Okay, look at this. Oh, beautiful. Looks like we've got a little bit of gluing that we need to do. That sucks. Not looking forward to that, but it'll be no big deal. We'll make it work. Looks like they show you where to stick the battery into the battery hole. Obviously a couple of screws to hold the tail on. This is a big plane. 1800 millimeters, guys. Look at this. We have to measure 290 millimeters oh for gosh. the center of gravity. That means 29 centimeters. Remember when we were going to elementary school and they were like, Everybody's gonna be using metric. You might as well learn how to drive in kilometers per hour. No thanks. Yes. Everybody, oh wow. Look at that nut and bolt sack. Here, hold my nut and bolt sack. Oh. Beautiful. Nice and small. Yeah, we're not done yet. <laughs> What's this? Pulsar, advanced stability system. Oh, I was reading that on the box. I was gonna what? ask you what that meant. It comes with a Pulsar advanced stable. I just got done saying it didn't. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what's in here. Maybe we don't need stabilization. Okay, look at that. Oh. Okay, well, it evidently comes with a third party Pulsar advanced st stability system. I don't read words this much. Okay, multi in, elevator in, S bus in, aileron out, elevator out, rudder out, wheel out. Hmm, okay, well, that seems a little bit weird. So I guess in that case, we'll be using that. And then you wouldn't necessarily have to use, oh boy, it comes with some adapters here. Okay, so it comes with one, two, three. Okay, so that's a split out. Okay, so the multi-in would come from a receiver in if you don't have uh, PPM. Okay, so this, yeah, it goes like that, the minus sign down, okay. And then that's uh, electric in, I don't know. We'll figure this out. <clears throat> if you could just start reading this manual to me, that'd yes. be great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so evidently it does come with that, so my apologies. Spoke too soon. I was trying to do things in a thoughtful, reasonable manner, and yet I, <laughs> as usual, have totally stumbled all over myself. So we'll just go ahead and leave this here so you guys can look at that beautiful thing. Uh, wing spars. Oh, yeah, baby. These things are biggins. Look at this. Goodness. Definitely carbon fiber. How do you know it's carbon fiber and not fiberglass? Wait. The way it sounds and the way it looks and the way it looks and feel how light that is. Yeah, it feels like a drinking yeah. straw <laughs> and yet it's huge. I love that noise. Now, I think these ones Those might be fiberglass. Okay, so continuing onward, we have another sack of delight here. We're just gonna slice right into that. <laughs> we need to give them a warning before we do those things. 
All right, so what do we have here? We have some beautiful winglets. Oh yeah, baby. Look at these winglets, they're gorgeous. Not much reinforcement, and there is one place on a plane where that's okay, and that's on winglets, why? Because that's probably what you're gonna screw up first. So from my experience, these things will be the first things to break off in a huge fireball. So we're just gonna leave them there to enjoy life, the short life that does exist for it. Okay, just squishing that back in the hole. I know you guys are like, take the wing out, Brian. Take the wing out. You're killing us here. Oh, I've got more sacks oh to show you first. What is that? Oh, that is what goes down the wing and hooks up to the EDF modules. Or see, not the EDFs, but the uh, ESCs. Wow. Dang, those things were expensive to make. Okay, <clears throat> wires. These are extension cables. Mmm, smell. Why? Just do it. Oh. Yes, it smells like electronics. Okay, so these, these are extension cords. Okay, so that's a banana jack, a bana banana jack. So I believe what's gonna happen is these will be a quick disconnect that go into the wing, okay? So yes, when you get into airliners, you run into weird things that you need that you didn't realize you needed, and then you have sacks, of course. All right, continuing onward. I'm just emptying each of these weird cavities that might house important nut sacks that I've missed, and I have not missed any. So we're gonna continue cutting, here we go. The wing is about ready to come out. Super excited for this. Really good packaging, nothing to complain about here. Ball links, I have to play with my own ball links? What the frick? Oh yeah, oh yes. Look at this, look how slow it is. It's beautiful. Strong, look, you remember how I was bending earlier? Look how strong this is, oh yeah. Matte finish on the LEDs, Ooh, like that's that. very, that's very interesting. Cool. Looks like they took a Lego and stuck it on. It okay, huge, beautiful. Ailerons, inboard flaps. Looks like a Fowler configuration, possibly. I can't tell. Nope, it doesn't separate. It's just got, it's just got this beautiful spot here. You know what's really cool about this? You know why that's cool, Cam Crew? Why? Because look what they did with the uh, spoilers. They're obviously fixed right now, but someday they could be unfixed. Um, we could break them. Okay, two wheels. Beautiful. Love it. Love the way it looks. And yes, that is a spring-loaded. Bogey, not squishy. not squishy. They are rock not hard. Not squishy at all. They are rock hard. Yes. But we have a spring-loaded bogey here, which is super awesome. Of course, we have the you're about to die markings here. <laughs> so for the people that are exiting through the window, uh, if that ever happens to you, pretty much bend over and kiss your butt goodbye. It's all over. You're getting into the dinghy, trying to save your life in that way. That looks so sweet. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. Can't wait till this thing's built. Okay, so super exciting. Oh, I didn't even notice. There is a mm -hmm. DB9 male, which is very interesting that they should use this particular connector because I happen to use those at work for lots of our serial communication. Of course, that's just gonna be to manipulate the flaps, ailerons, and then the lights. Of course, there's gonna be a strobe light and then some sort of a nav light that should stay on solid. And let's cut the other half of the wing pocket. Oh, yes. Foam to protect the foam from the foam so the foam doesn't get damaged by the other foam pieces. That's the way we like it, guys. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna say, the manufacturers of these airplanes have done a good job of really improving the packaging. Even though I didn't feel like we had a lot of issues, I think we've had a couple of planes that had minor damage, like the timber, both of them. Oh, okay, so I already took that one out, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, that was just, probably should have done that before. The other wing is nested right in here. Now this one, ironically enough, I'm just noticing this. There is no rod attaching the flap, but there is a rod already attaching the aileron. Mm -hmm. So I do think that that's a little bit weird. Yeah. I wonder if it's just because of the way these were laying on top of each other, they were able to hit a cavity that wouldn't have otherwise been manageable had they installed that uh, attachment point there. Mm -hmm. Also, I just noticed these landing gear doors. Beautiful hinge technique. Simple, concise, to the point. Looks like it's gonna work well. Love it. Also love the fact that they've kept these covered. Don't love the match. The match on color is mm -hmm. poor, but it's okay. 
I love the tight paint joints here. Look at this, guys. Absolutely gorgeous on that leading edge. This would actually be a de-icing um, <clears throat> bellows. I, I forget what they call that, but it blows up like this and it breaks the ice off of the wingtip in, in real life, of course. The wings on modern aircraft are incredibly complex and it is so cool to see all these details coming out on these radio controlled aircraft. And you know, to be honest with you, the more the merrier, the more cool details they put on these planes, just the more I fall in love with the way that they fly and perform. Now, that being said, it's always a balancing act between performance and weight on radio controlled aircraft and real aircraft because we want a light plane. A light plane flies better, generally speaking, and tolerates the relatively low power to weight ratio that we have on many planes. Although that's getting a lot better now that we're in the 6S territory on jets, EDF jets on a routine basis. Um, 6S is a lot more expensive to run, and that's a bummer, but you know what? It's just like one of those things. You can either have a good 6S experience or you can have a very mediocre 3S experience. That's not to say that all 3S jets are bad. Very well packaged, very strong box, no twist. That's a mark of success in my book. Complex planes that get from China to wherever they're going in the North American part of the world. And then also they have to ship halfway across the country just to get back to us. So that's pretty exciting. Oh my goodness, this looks so gorgeous. Oh, it looks like a plane crashed into this box. I love it. Oh, wow. So gorgeous. Look at this. Look how beautiful that is. I love the smoothness. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful anti-crash beacon back here. Loving it. Elevators, ball links, serial cables. So cool. Just absolutely love the way this thing is looking. Um, we've been waiting a long time. It's been well worth the wait, of course. Okay, so just pulling this apart. You guys may wonder why I'm always trying to put the box back together. Well, <laughs> We've done so many boxes that I've learned that it's not worth trying to figure it out later, okay? More foam to protect the foam from the foam so the foam doesn't get damaged by the other foam pieces. That's always important. We love that. Oh man, look at this nacelle. Oh yes. Wow. So absolutely gorgeous. <gasps> Show them the spinny thing mm -hmm. with your fingernail. Do you see that? Do you see cool. how sweet that is? That is absolutely That's so cool. phenomenal. We have the spinny thing. <clears throat> what does the spinny thing do? What does the spinny thing do? What does the spinny marking do? Oh, it does something. I it's can't remember. Trick of the day. Okay, so the spinny thing, I've been told a couple of different things. First of all, these are twin 70 millimeter EDFs with big old motors. I don't even care what size it is. I'm sure you guys can geek out on that by looking at the spec sheet. If you follow the link in the video description below, you can also buy this plane. Instead of looking at the specs, you could be enjoying it in the air. Look at this, fiberglass reinforcement, beautiful, strong connection. This thing is rock solid on this EDF. Now, a couple things to consider. Twin EDFs historically have been battery chewers. This is a 70. I think a twin 70 is very manageable. Also, more power means planes saved lives. Power equals flight. Overpowering equals more exhilarating flight. Now, is this a fighter jet? No. Do I want it to fly like a fighter jet? No. Do I want it to have the power to weight ratio of a fighter jet? Obviously. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. So the tail. Guys, I gotta love this matte blue and poppy silver and flat clear just absolutely looks gorgeous. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's gonna get cut out at some point here. There's like a bit of a relief there. Looks like that may have been a vent at one point. It's kind of hard to tell. Mm. I believe that's a vent. But just love the way that that looks. Obviously, we've got these. I don't know if that's considered to be a strake or if it's an antenna. I think a strake typically is on large airliners nacelles. And the strake induces a vortex that is somehow in, improves the aerodynamics of the plane, okay? So anyway, I don't know if that's a trick. I don't think it's a strake. I think it's an antenna. Okay, so we've got three wires that go back here. One's labeled rudder, one's labeled elevator, and one is labeled nothing. So that must be the LED, which is gonna carry up and go to the top of the tail. Beautiful ball link on the rudder. Reinforcement, show them this, mm -hmm. camera crew. Yep. Reinforced plastic tip. 
Anytime nice. you have a tip that you're gonna be ramming in, you want it to be nice and hard. Okay, two screws, countersunk hole, <laughs> what? I didn't say anything. So then this is gonna go into the serial port. Check this out. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is an awesome fit. Oh, that is so cool. And when this plane is done being crashed, in a million pieces, oh yeah, seriously. We could put one half here and the other half inside the office. No, okay, no. it's been vetoed. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had my hopes up. Oh, now pleasure. this is an antenna. And by the way, that must be a one thick antenna. So I'm actually very pleased that that's a thick antenna. We get a lot of subpar antennas. And uh, sometimes the antennas leave a lot to be desired. Now, that being said, antennas don't make or break a plane. I do like the sacrificial antenna that's gonna be broken off in the first flight. Generally, we get those on warbirds, the ones that point forward on the wings, like the pedo tubes and things like this. Oh my goodness, look at the front. That is absolutely fantastic. It looks so good. I thought that was gonna be the most ugly thing ever it's, that was never gonna actually work. That's like metal. I know, what is that? It's metal. It's gotta be metallic. It's very cool. It's very cool. And then look at that forward facing, whatever thing that is. I'm sure it's probably radar. Ooh, the nose cone. We were just talking about hard tips that you have to cram oh, into things. Yeah, that's nice. Absolutely gorgeous, guys. Look at the windows. Is the door? Oh, that's the just door. This the decal is a little are... bit, here, this one's got a little bump on it. So I'm gonna push it down and see if it goes. Yeah, but yeah. the matte and the navy blue It looks so blue good. Is gorgeous. I love this color scheme. And then they've got this blue hint to the windows, mm -hmm. which is just absolutely gorgeous. You don't want to be able to see what's going on inside of this plane. No. You know, especially if it's going down to <coughs> Epstein Island. <clears throat> so anyways, <laughs> sorry, different topic. Plugs here. We've got the elevator plug. We've got the rudder plug. And this one must be for the LEDs, guys. Okay, so I'm not the sure elevator. about that, but we'll find out. Well, I mean, there's only three things back there. There's LEDs, right. there's rudder, and there's elevator. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. We've got a couple of knobs here, bumps. We've got a release here on the hatch. Obviously big, heavy duty antenna. I like it when you can hold up a plane by the canopy without the canopy releasing. Okay, we're going into a little bit more detail than usual, mostly because this thing looks freaking fantastic. Look at that, how cool would that be? Still no. no. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Had to try. All right, so that is the bottom of the box. Obviously this thing is super stout, robust and protective, which are all the things that we want on a plane like this, because really at the end of the day, if it doesn't make to you in one piece, then what's the point of buying this thing? It's gonna be expensive and you don't wanna have to fight it once it gets to your house because it's broken. Now I can't remember where this piece goes. That goes in the bottom part. It goes in the bottom part, like here. Well, anyway, the point is we'll figure it out and then I'll get this thing all cleaned up and we'll come right back for the build. So stay tuned so much more on this J65. Okay, so YouTube, we are gonna build this thing right now. The LJ65. I can't ever get this model right, I don't understand it. I just spent the last 20 minutes cleaning two giant goops of glue off of my windscreen. Mm -hmm. You guys may need to do that. But the good news is, it didn't scratch the plastic, I just used warm water and uh, my wife's dish towel. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sure that that glue was clean. I'm sure it was. <laughs> Um, also, I was just basking in the glory of how beautiful mm -hmm. this thing is inside, and I realized I didn't show it. We were. Look how amazingly clean so that nice. is. It's painted, why? Who cares, it looks nice. I love it. I do too. But I'm just saying, why? <laughs> we just use the four, 14 extra, cents worth of labor and do something better. Extra gray paint. But around. still, that is gorgeous. That is now that being said, what else? Why do we have ESC wires there? That's because when you go to take this plane apart, a couple things to consider. First of all, we have quick detaches there. Why? This thing is glued together. You're not gonna detach it, okay? <laughs> but the thing that's cool about this is because the nacelles receive their power here, like this, that gets through the whole fuselage like that. And so what's really nice about this whole setup is that they have really thought through making it a fairly easy assembly. In fact, it's supposed to take 20 minutes. Unfortunately, as usual, I've already blown the time frame before we started. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick this in the hole. Watch this, watch this. Let's see how hard this is. Oh yeah, wowzers. Ooh boy, that's thick. That's thick, stick it in. Can you reach, reach around? 
Okay. Got it. Hold on. Got it? Yep. Ooh, fancy. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do, guys. This is a Brian Phillips hack. Watch this. Because I don't want to go chasing in the wing, I'm just going to do that. Yay! Now I don't have to worry about that. So, remember, <laughs> you need the side with female connectors uh, back here. So just don't like mix that up and do it the other way. Also, you'll note that we don't have the screws in the tail, so that'd be a good oh. one to not forget. Yeah, don't. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this in the hole. We'll just ram it in there again. And uh, you know, it usually helps if you have a friend to, to grab it and help you when you're ramming it. Hey, hold on, I gotta make sure that Here, hold on, stick your hand in there. Yep. <laughs> I'm trying to film at the same Who time. Who needs to film while you're ramming it? Just stick to the issues. <laughs> Aren't you, are you right-handed? Do we need to switch hands? This is my right hand. <laughs> oh, come on, get out of there. So yeah, so there's easier ways to do this. I'm 100% certain, but we've just showed- That was more fun. You can mark that off the list of ways you should do it. Yes. <laughs> just don't do it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna just take and, and put those together. And hey, now we have a loop. See, infinite power loop. Who needs the power company now? All right, so getting back to the point. We have to stick the long lead down the length of the fuse at some point, okay? So just in thinking about the nature of this build, we are gonna use some delicious foam, no foam. You could use mus mucilage, you could use CA, you could use whatever you want. You could not glue it and hope it makes it. <laughs> I would not that. recommend that. But if you don't glue it, seriously, here's a tip, okay? If you seriously don't glue it, Blenderm is something that people have been using for years to hold together sailplane wings. So it is possible that some of you are thinking, I can't get that fuse in my uh, Ford Fiesta or Honda Civic if it's all in one piece. Because look, it is a fairly big fuse. But to be honest, this does come off in one piece with two with screws. Two screws. Mm -hmm. So you probably could get it in your Ford Fiesta. I'm serious. Seriously here. Now, obviously I don't have to disassemble it, thank God. But if I did, to get into my Ford Fiesta, then I would be uh, a little bit more empathetic. No, you wouldn't. Okay. What do you, oh, you're gonna put that on before I forget. Are those the long ones? They're the long ones. Okay, correct. So there's the screws, guys. There's not very many. There's three Okay, wait, wait, wait watch me cramming it in, in here. Oh, don't wanna miss that. Do you guys see this? Wow. I did not have to do anything fancy. That is exactly the way I want screwing to go. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy. <laughs> nothing, nothing fancy. <laughs> Just stick it on the tip, ram it in the hole. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. See, see, spoke too soon. Uh, okay, so you see this hole? Not mm -hmm. quite aligned. So I just pivot it down a little oh, bit. That doesn't count. Well, I mean, I, <clears throat> I still, I want to show the viewers at home that I'm down for the struggle. <clears throat> Because I am this plane. We've been waiting so long for this plane. We were like, you're like a little bit giddy. I'm just gonna. Are we ever? Are we ever going to get our LJ65? Still just the J. Oh, I just know there was like a. If you wait for a long time, do you get to add the L? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we can. But I, I hey, listen. What? We're supposed to behave ourselves for new planes. Oh. That's what I was told that one time. Whoops. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm almost done tightening this one. Remember, it's the longer of the screws. There's a bunch of short ones. Yep. The short ones are actually for the nacelles. And for the wings, the bottom of the wings. And yep. I think you're going to have one extra of each of your screws. Because who wants the long screws to hold the giant wing thing on? Well, there's six of them. There are. There are a lot. And by the way, the construction of this is as per typical on a lot of our current builds. We've got one, two, and then a large carbon fiber spar. So when you think about the general strength of the aircraft, most of it's gonna be bared on this, okay? So that's actually what's holding your plane together. And then the screws just keep things latched in, essentially. And yes, it does seem like if you're new to the hobby, you're like, how can that possibly hold it together? Just now go look at a real plane if you really wanna be nervous. Because I have a real plane and the real plane wing holds on with a five sixteenths bolt. So, I mean, that's real, real life. What? What? Why are, are you really going this out of order? Obviously. I'm gonna okay. do it the hard way. Okay, fine. 
We gotta make this exciting. Okay, now I don't know which one's which and I don't know that it really matters. Ooh, that's actually a good point. I don't think it matters, but it might be nice if you would hold on to this mm -hmm. uh, camera crew. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark. Label them at least so you yeah, know. Yeah, just, just in case, yeah. you know, there'd be like some weird happening that happens and I, I don't wanna have to try to track it down. It probably wouldn't be that big a deal. So this one's gonna be um, the left side. Mm -hmm. Left, okay. And then this one here is gonna be the right side. So I'm just gonna mark it in the same orientation, right? Yes, I know you guys are like, oh, that's such a waste of time, Brian. You're never gonna have a problem with your radio controlled airplane that's super simple, that doesn't have 4,000 moving components on it. Honey, if they're here and they've watched this much of the video, wasting time is probably not <coughs> the top of their concerns. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the clarity. <laughs> Oh, it's always good to get that out of the way right at the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> Make sure you insult all the viewers at once. I think I insult you. What? You jerk. <laughs> all right, we're just cramming these things in the hole like we love to do here on Brand Phillips RC. We would do that even if we weren't filming. All right, so now this thing goes into that thing. Okay, right there, that thing. Hold on. What, what are you trying to do? Show the people. See this? Yes. Watch. Watch this thing go into that thing. Oh yeah. Ooh, yes. Oh, oh, I found it. Yes. <laughs> Can you imagine what the closed captions look like? <laughs> like it's gotta be curious. I'm gonna start watching this Ow. closed caption. Oh yeah, look at that. That is, really that is so sweet. There's a dihedral in that and everything. And look where the holes are. Hold on, let's stick this between the cracks. And let's go ahead and cram it in. Do you see how nice this looks? That is gorgeous. That's really cool. I haven't even held that up against the wall to tempt my <laughs> wife to get me one so that I can put it up as a display just, piece in my living keep room. Just trying. Because we don't already have, have a enough airplanes, airplanes and or around. toys. Yeah. This is not a toy though. This is like, this is a toy for adults. Adult. Also known as an adult toy. Hobby what? Product. <laughs> adult toys. Jeez, camera crew. What do you work for being good? <laughs> Okay, let's just, okay, so now, whoa! Abandoning it. I'm going to the next one, going to the backup. Okay, show the people at home the alignment of this hole. It's uh, definitely not aligned yet. Mm -mm. You see that, guys? Yep. It looks like a crescent moon. Oh yeah, there it is. That's pretty good stuff. Now, trick of the day, trick of the day. How do you hold this thing on? It's a stainless steel screw with a magnetized tip, so obviously it's not gonna have enough carbon to work with that thing, so you just throw that on the ground and let somebody else get it. And grab from the pile up here. So what do you do to hold that thing on? You can either hold one finger here, and look at that, wow, going downhill. Now, there's another trick of the day, and it requires a little bit of a nail, and you can sometimes hold it with your nail. And I do prefer that method, because then you can spin it, okay? So you'll note that my index finger is bigger than my pinky finger, but I always choose my index finger for extra girth. It's true. So there it is, guys. Now, if you're in a real pinch and you need to be able to hang on to a screw, the best way to do it is to just try harder or have an assistant hold the plane upside down and you can balance it. If you get into a really bad spot, look at this, somebody else, I'm just waiting for somebody else to pick it up and I finally pick it up myself. <laughs> All those other people are downstairs. Oh, that's true. Okay, so the other nacelle. So what's gonna happen with this one is exactly the same process. It should be pretty, this couch is actually working great for this. Normally we would use a plane stand. Thanks Tom for that. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is the plane stand just doesn't really work on this half of the plane. You'd have to have it adapted together. And yeah, you're kind of supposed to glue the fuse together, but I just like doing things wrong so that there's extra confusion and turmoil because that's what we do here on Brian Phillips mm -hmm. RC is we cause confusion and turmoil and that way you'll keep coming back and hitting pause and rewind and what was that setting? I'm sorry, all I heard was penetration and uh, I got distracted. So what did you say? So what you can do is there is a gear icon in the lower, well, I don't know where it is on your screen, but the there's a gear right somewhere. Right. You have to pull yes. up the setup options on YouTube. 
And what you can do, and I get this question all the time from new people, and by the way, welcome to the hobby. If you're new to the hobby, it's not always this complicated, but sometimes it is. Um, what we do is we help you guys kind of figure out some of the basics, and then you can build on them just like what we've done over the years, just like every other hobbyist has ever done. Okay, and it's really cool because the next thing you know, you're gonna have 250 planes in your basement and you're gonna be, um, you know, hoping that you come home to people when you get back from work. <laughs> so I push that in, look at how absolutely amazing that looks. Oh, wow. Okay, gotta put the screws in. Now, keeping in mind, Ford Pinto, uh, if you drive the Ford Pinto, and you wanna make this, I don't even know how small that cabin is, but let's just say it's like an Escort GT. I had an Escort GT when I was growing up, and that was a fun car. But anyway, um, the ironic thing is my beautiful wife of many, many years, I mean, we've been married for like a million years. Yeah. She and I both had essentially Escort. She had a Tracer, and I had an Escort. So we had almost exactly, exactly the same, same car interior. when we met. She had a four-door, you know, like super, Practical. Mine was like a two-door. It was door. from a dead old lady. Like, what did you expect? You stole it from a dead lady? <laughs> bought what? it. Oh, you bought it. I see how this goes. Well, anyway, my Ford Escort GT was a 1.8 liter dual overhead cam, and I used every dollar that was available to me to make that an amazing car in a totally impractical manner. <laughs> this is an awesome looking tail. I'm just gonna, just real quick, I just gotta walk over here with it and not do that. Well, now, that is still sweet. <laughs> if it straddled both sides of the wall, how cool would that be? Like, what if we put it on that wall and then it was like inside her shower? Someday when you have a building, you can put a plane through the wall. That sounds kind of violent, actually. <laughs> but anyway, so you guys can see how this works. I am super thrilled with how easy that went together. That's great, yeah. I think it's absolutely gorgeous the way it went together. It feels rock solid. I was very concerned about these beautiful rings I thought mm. maybe the rings would look really hokey, but they actually look absolutely perfect. Yeah, why were they not? And, <clears throat> well, I mean, but just look at the, the box. I couldn't tell if it was actually gonna look good. This is gonna gleam in the mm -hmm. sun. And sometimes you get those things from the marketing guys at the companies and you're like, mm, yeah, I don't think it's gonna look that good. No, it looks pretty sweet. Okay. We got a lot of stuff in this small hole. It's look at this. Well, that's true. Do but you want to start by putting the spars <clears throat> in? Since you read the directions, why don't you tell me where to put the sticky stuff? They're supposed to go in the front first. first? Okay, and but then the front goes to the back. Yes. That's what the directions say. All right, so let's go ahead and ignore those. Assuming you'll do them differently. Oh boy, oh, whoa, goodness. wowzers. Wow, whoa. Premature there. So what I'm gonna do is, I, I wanna warn you guys, if you use foam to foam or mucilage for this instead of CA, you need to be aware that it will get sticky and it may be kind of hard to actually cram these in the tube, okay? So you see how I've put some sticky stuff on there? That glue, and it says put some on, that's what And they, it just says some glue. It does some glue, it does not say like glue. cover it up. It doesn't say use like six gallons of glue like this is gonna hold your life together. This is just literally gonna keep it from slipping out easily. And then you're actually gluing the foam together. So just think of all the different planes in the past that we have glued together. That's not even that much. In fact, I think I could probably do a little bit more. Let's see if I can just put a little of this juiciness between the two halves. Let's try this, watch this, watch this. This is gonna work great, okay? Oh yeah, right between the cheeks. Okay, and then we're just gonna spin it and spin it and spin it some more and then hope uh, that we can get that coated. Ah, there we go, that's what I was going for. So I don't know if that consistency makes sense to you guys. What you wanna do is, <clears throat> with this foam to foam, it's a contact adhesive. So the best way that this will work is that when it's coated on both sides and it's had a chance to tack up, it's going to be almost like an envelope that you licked, okay? And then it gets so tacky, you stick that other piece of paper to it and you just basically cannot open it. It'll rip the paper before it opens and separates. Same thing is true in this concept, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and stick this in the hole, okay? It's not a super tight pocket, so I'm not super worried about it. But as you can see, I've got that glued in there somewhat, okay? So, and I'm not feeling very good purchase on the sides. Mm. So that does not instill a lot of confidence. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna kinda clean the tube off 
and I'm gonna pull it back out and you see what I've got left is just this little bit of residual. So I'm gonna just go a little bit heavy on the tip, which I didn't, I hadn't planned on doing that, but now that I feel how loose it is in that pocket, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put it in there and just kind of spin it in and just let it walk that glue in. You see how it's pulling it in as I go? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm just gonna work the hole and kind of spread it inside of there and then everything is gonna be just fine hunky-dory and it should be no problem at all. And I'm gonna keep that from falling off the counter. But the idea is at the end of the day, you don't wanna make a giant mess and you don't wanna waste a ton of glue because this glue stuff is not free. And anybody who's been flying for a while knows exactly what I'm talking about. The glue actually adds up pretty quick because especially if you crash as often as I do. Okay, so. Now, <clears throat> speaking about the way this is supposed to go, those two shafts are gonna go into these two holes, okay? So since this can still spin, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this side as well. And I'm actually gonna glue this side as well, okay? And you'll note that I just put a little slather on there. I didn't actually spread it. And that's because I'm gonna have to eventually stick it in the hole and I wanna get glue in there, but I don't wanna have a giant mess on my hands and I don't want it to get tacked up too much so that I can actually make the penetration in time. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do a Q-tip trick where we just spread it around a little bit and we just leave it kind of thick, okay? And that's just the way it's gonna be. It's not gonna be perfect. There's a possibility we'll get a drip of glue somewhere else and that's just the way it is. It's not a big deal, it's gonna work, okay? There it is. That's all we're gonna do. It's gonna be super simple and it's gonna work fine. Then the glue that we apply here is gonna tack up while we get the wires attached. So this is a really dangerous gambling maneuver. Mm, okay. Okay, now this is keyed all the way around. Looks like a bread box. Bread box? Is that a, even a I was going to say, I, that bread was box? impressive that you even came so up with So check this out. So here we go. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go all the way along the surface it touches, not the face. The face will probably not touch. Okay. Now I'm going to take this nacelle and tail section and flip it upside down. I'm going to keep my fingers on the inside so it doesn't get all messy. And then I'm just gonna glue the other major component here. And that's a pretty fair amount of glue. I'm being pretty liberal with this glue here because this glue is gonna contact an area that's gonna contact. This is not gonna be a waste of glue here. Whereas on those sticks, it may be a waste of glue because I don't think it's gonna purchase very many, many contact points. So then I'm going up and inside of the little doohickey bread box, whatever you wanna call it. And all the way around the edges, I'm just kind of spreading it real loosely, okay? Doesn't need to be covered like head to toe in glue. Uh, the more glue you do, probably the better you're gonna get for a bond. But now I'm gonna do the other side, which is gonna be the ticket that really gets us good purchase and good adhesion. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna take and stick this down in the couch because that's gonna work out nicely, being careful about my antenna. Now I'm gonna take and just go a little bit at a time just to give us a, a an area that's gonna tack up. Now remember, this stuff will tack up and be very challenging to press together. So I am literally gonna go light on this because we've already got a lot on the other side that's gonna get pressed in there, okay? So as you can see, I'm not going crazy. I'm just kinda trying to work fairly quick now, okay? And now that can just sit and tack up. And this is what we call letting the glue cook off or chemically react with the air, the ambient air. Now I'm gonna take this and I am gonna put it on the plane stand, I think, maybe. Okay. Not 100% sure, just notice the ESCs have this uh, graded opening, that is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna actually go this way and this is gonna be kinda heavy so the camera crew is probably gonna be prepared to help me so that we don't have a huge malfunction here because the heaviest part of the aircraft, of course, has got the nacelles involved. So now I just wanna stick these in and get them to fall down as far as possible. Of course, we'll be able to use gravity to help with that. <clears> hmm. <throat> so now, camera crew is gonna hold this underneath the bottom with one hand, right there. Now normally you wouldn't have all this crap assembled because you would have followed the directions. Of course, we don't like doing that. It's too much, too much effort to follow the directions. Okay. That was just a hilarious joke for anybody who's listening. Hopefully there's three of you here still. Hey, can you not move that please? Mm -hmm. Hold still, right there. Hold still, you keep moving, you're moving. Hold still, thank you, very good. Okay, so that's the light, the least important first, obviously. Then the elevator, so black goes to brown because this is a 
In my right hand, a Futaba color code. Of course, over here, this is a Hextronics color code. JR Hextronics. Okay, so this is Rudder. So then the Rudder is gonna go to Rudder. So we have black to black. Okay, so that's gonna go down. Okay, now hold steady there, camera crew. I know you're doing the job of two or three adults right now. So let go, okay. I've got it now. So now what I need you to do is just help me guide the wires into the hole, if at all possible. Okay, so actually some of it can go back as well, but I'd rather it go forward. Okay. I'm just trying to keep them out of the glue and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that worked pretty terrible. You oh, go. you know what I could do? You know what I could do? I could have the camera crew pop the canopy yep. and then I'll hold this open and then I can probably grab that stuff if I'm careful. Nope, can't. I'm gonna try another way, an easier way. Now that it's all plugged together, I'm gonna just go vertical with it. Okay. Now this stuff is going to be challenging to insert because now that glue is gonna be setting up pretty fiercely. Okay, guys, you see what's going on? I've got those both lined up. And remember, if it's hard to squeeze in, that probably means that you're good. Those, I want you to see that rudder wire. Yep. See how it's fighting us? Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to keep your hand out of that opening. Okay. I'm gonna just try to walk this in. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking and knocking those out of the way of the purchase point. Okay, so now I got it lined up and just walking it in as carefully as possible. I'm using a wide grip. I'm not pushing on the tail because that will deflect. There is a hard nose on this plane. I'm gonna hold it with my feet, brace it with my calves. Okay, there it is, it's together. That was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I know you're probably thinking, what? That's no, pretty hard. Bad. Okay, so then this, this just happened to exit yep. out the landing gear hole. So I'm just gonna stuff that one back in. Just kind of get the wires in there is all I need to do. I just noticed an anti-crash beacon between the wheels. So cool. So oh, cool. cool. <clears throat> okay, so carefully. Make sure you have clearance before you do that, by the way. One of the many reasons why those lights are up high, not the least of which is that. Okay, so there's one more set that's not falling down. This plane is actually feeling pretty good and light, which is nice. Okay, there it goes. Those adapters make the, make the actual cable pretty heavy. And so when you give it a nice stout shake, they do fall. But it's just a little bit too small to get my hand all the way up inside. And so I'm gonna see if I can walk it over. Yep, there it is. See guys, it was tangled around one single servo extension. Okay, so we've got one and we've got two. Sweet. Oh boy, I'm loving this plane. It is so gorgeous. Okay, and it does balance. Amazing, I didn't expect that. All right, so I have two of these plugs. Might as well go ahead and plug them in. I'm gonna see if I can kind of untangle them. I have one wire that's sort of tangled here, it looks like. Well, this one's, they're kind of both tangled, but really, I don't know. Tangled is a loose definition when you get into RC aircraft because it's not like an accessible spot and that stuff's just gonna fall back there. But you see what I was talking about there, how they might go on top or under or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's why we label them because before it seemed like that'd be such an easy thing to identify. And now you can understand why we did what we did. So the left side's gonna go over here, the right side's gonna go over there. Okay, so that's the right side. And then this one, you can kind of see the heat shrink there. So the red happens to be on the tail end. So remember, left and right is always designated from like if you were the uh, pilot of the aircraft, if you were sitting in the pilot seat, okay? And then we have black, yellow, and red. The red goes forward on this one, okay? So I can stick that in. Beautiful setup, by the way. Just absolutely gorgeous setup. Don't really know why the BEC is sticking up like that. Now, it does look like you can undo those screws, okay? that mount these brackets down and you can actually screw this whole thing down as one unit too, which is just a totally cool idea. All right, so forcep time. Why do we need forceps? Forceps will get into tight spots and help you move and manipulate wires around. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. <clears throat> just grabbing those wires. Those are just a couple of the wires that got dropped into a kind of a front forward position there. I just want them to go back to their home, which is back here. And remember, not, not lots of moving parts in here. The elevators are outside of the wing, as in the control arms, control horns, and then the rudders also out of the wing, so you don't have to worry about those things tangling up with a control surface, which would be pretty customary on a larger aircraft like this. Many times they're gonna actually be inside the center of the fuse, so you do have to be careful about cable management because the cable management might be the difference between having a bound elevator or not. Okay, so now we have two throttle servos. You have an aileron and an elevator servo. We have a flap servo plug, and then we have a gear servo plug, as well as a wheel, what, wheel, gear. Oh, steerable nose wheel, okay. And then that one comes up a different hole for some weird reason, and then rudder, and then there's another one that says wheel. What the heck? Oh, that's probably a wheel light. <clears throat> and then this one here must be I don't know what the heck that is. BEC power, looks like. I don't know why that one comes out this, this side. That seems kind of weird to me. Do you understand why they would hmm. do that maybe? From having actually read the directions? Because no. I sure as heck didn't. I know you didn't. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and turn the model. Uh, let's go over there with it. And by the way, this does come with an XT90. XT90s will work with an EC5, which is what comes equipped on the smart batteries. And yeah, sure, you can buy an adapter if you want to, but there's no reason to use an adapter. They go together just fine without. This is gonna be a big one. Yeah, it is. Which is cool, I'm excited. Oh, we have linkages to install on the flaps. Let's do that quick. Oh, okay. So we have two linkages to install right here and right there. Now, I don't know how these are gonna, oh, the reach. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna reach. What I was the setting? I think there was a whole positioning, uh, flip a couple more pages. Mm-hmm. And it's saying on the top right, there you go. Okay, so flap. They're saying the outside hole, okay. So it looks like you can kind of study the way this one's set up. If the servo's in the same position relative to the control surface, you should be able to mimic that. Oh yeah, super easy. Oh, that's moved now, so I can't really clip that on. But that's okay. We are going to have to check that for, you know, home position anyway. So let's just go ahead and with the winglets already having been installed. Okay, now this one is opposite that. Mm -hmm. See that? But I think we're still going to go the same way. Top hole. <clears throat> Okay, cool. So now we can just go ahead and slide these wings on. Absolutely love the way this plane looks. It looks amazing. I can't wait. XFly has put out some good stuff. We haven't been able to do a lot of it, which is a bummer. We've done some of it, but only some of it. And to be honest with you, this is the one I wanted to do. The best one. Okay, now. As I plug into that DB9, you don't want to bend pins over, so just be gentle. Make sure you have good purchase and it's aligned properly. Now this flap isn't hooked up, so I can grab inside this flap and then push forward a little bit. But I don't want to make a big squish spot, so I'm going to try to spread out my pressing a little bit. <clears throat> I don't have that all the way in, by the way. Oh, look how huge that is, that's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna lay this down like this and see if I can get a better purchase on this from this angle. I'm just trying to find a good spot. And it does have CG marked, but I don't know, it's sort of ambiguous. Okay, mm -hmm. I can see I'm about halfway crescent there. There's one hole. So Cam Crew, if you just keep mm -hmm. a hand on that, that'd be great. I need three on each, correct? Correct. Oh, by the way, if I didn't mention, we're using a two millimeter, mm -hmm. a two millimeter driver but it does come with a two millimeter driver as well. It's just not a driver, but a two millimeter wrench. Okay, got that started. Do I have it started? Yes, I do. Okay, so I found that if you can get one started, then you can pivot upon that mount point, okay? Because this hole is like half lined up. That one's not even close. Okay. 
So I'm probably gonna have to have you reach right there, carefully, no, from the back, from the unfortunately. Back. Okay. And then just push it out. Perfect, got it. You can let Ooh, go probably. Yeah. yeah, it's literally in. You don't have to do anything more now. Except now I've dropped. Okay, I'll get another one. There are six of these screws, so three on the left wing and three on the right wing. And the first time you put them together, it always takes a little extra effort because you have to get alignment of those holes. Okay, and you can see the, this is X-Fly model, 60 amp ESCs, <clears throat> which is pretty amazing. Twin 60s, hopefully that keeps everything running nice and cool. We'll see. My experience on twin EDFs is they are battery chewers and I am fully prepared to chew a battery on this plane. <laughs> but they're saying five to eight minutes is a long that time. That seems like a long flight For time. a twin EDF. Yeah. I mean, that must mean that they've overpowered the system, Big which is plane. perfect. Okay, go ahead and hold that just okay. as a tip. Now, <clears throat> oh shoot. Oh good, that didn't push. I was just noticing that I had depressed some of the leads on the edge of my canopy cover, whatever you want to call it, battery access. Oh. Unfortunately, we're on a soft cushion, so it didn't actually damage anything. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this onto the wing spar. We're just gonna, I need to lift up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, you can let it back down now. Okay. Now it should start to balance. Okay, so just finding those uh, four contact points. And that one went in without any trouble at all. Just, yeah, just one hand there. Yep. Just keep it from tipping. Thank you, Megan. Okay, so we've got, these ones can just be dropped in now. And I'll start the center one. There we go, pulled it in the rest of the way. And then this whole alignment looks like I might need to push in just a hair out here. Yep, got it. That was actually one of the easier wings we've done in with six holes. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit dreading that. Also forward facing landing lights, absolutely gorgeous. This looks so cool. There is definitely a break there that opens. That is so cool. It's actually kind of an anti-break. That's why they got holes in there. But then I just love all the little details. This thing looks so realistic from the bottom. <clears throat> it's very clean on the bottom. That's something mm -hmm. we haven't always seen on airplanes. And strangely enough, you see the bottom of an airplane a lot. <laughs> Let's go over here just so you can see the sheer scale size of it. Oh no, I need the canopy cover. Oh. Can you grab that? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Okay. That is absolutely beautiful. Look at the size of that, guys. 1800 millimeters. Okay, so I'm six foot one ish. Okay. Yeah. And it's almost exactly the same high. Now, this will squish into the carpet a little bit. But as you can see, it's not quite as tall as me, but that is a big aircraft. Yeah. And to be honest with you, the battery that's flying this, a 6S5000 or 6S7000, they suggest five to seven, five to 6,000. We're gonna go 5,000 and 7,000 just to see what performs better. But absolutely phenomenal. Look at the beauty of the wing. It's just gorgeous. Okay, now, the tough decision. Look at the antenna. Looks so gorgeous. Oh, and yes, you can see through the windows. Yes, I am looking at light through the windows. Show the people. Do you see that blue? Oh, okay, wait, hold still so I can get, yep, because you can see outside with the window behind you. So cool. That's cool. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is a challenging step. And when I say challenging, I mean, this is probably a great deal of the reason why some of you guys are watching this video. And that is doing the radio setup. Now, I'm very torn on this decision, okay? Because as you know, the way we work with these hobby companies, whether it be, you know, like a, a local distributor or it be a manufacturer, whether it's directly through XFly or directly through FMS or Horizon Hobby or E-Flight or Spectrum or Hangar 9 or Banggood or whatever, you know, BitGo Hobby in this case uh, has worked with us on this plane. And so obviously the links are gonna take you to BitGo Hobby and you can support them by buying the plane then small proceeds come back to us and that's how we fund our channel. So we just work off a very small margin 
And then of course, as they sell these, then they help support us by sending us commissions, which is really nice because really these things are amazing and we're here to help show just how amazing they really are. So we're gonna try to be your eyes and hands before you make a decision. The tough part for us is that once in a while, we have a feature like this and I'm just not sure about it because I love this plane already and I wanna see it in its best light. And so I keep kind of leaning over toward this and I keep wanting to grab one of these beautiful receivers. Now, obviously this thing, this Pulsar is a stabilizer, okay? And I want you guys to know how well this thing works. But at the same time, I don't wanna take anything away from the plane if I was gonna put it into this receiver right here, which is the AR637T. Because here's the thing, at the end of the day, I don't really think I need the Pulsar to do what I need to do because I have AS3X and SAFE equipped on this particular receiver. Now that being said, you can get a six channel receiver that's gonna allow you to have the full six channels. But then if you wanna go to a receiver and then depend on an external uh, stabilizer, what happens is you have to then bump up to an eight channel and you're like, but why would you have to do, excuse me, you have to bump up to an eight channel and you would just get the 8230 or something like that. I don't know, I forget the model number, but it's the one without AS3X and safe. Because if you're gonna have stabilization through this device, then you need a way to actuate the device on, off, or whatever. So you're gonna have like a stabilizer on, you're gonna have an auto leveling, and then you're gonna have an off. And then sometimes some variations therein. That takes a whole channel of control. So guess what? You have a six channel plane here, elevator, rudder, flaps, ailerons, retracts, throttle. stabilizer on off, throttle. throttle, exactly. Now, when you use an AR631 or an AR637T, then you have stabilizer, controls, master gain and on and off built in. So even though it's only a six channel receiver, you get eight channels worth of control. So this is part of the reason why we've been leaning toward the NX-8 for all this time. <clears throat> why do we go into great detail about this? Because we know that some of you guys that are newer to the hobby, first of all, do not go out and buy this right away. You will be a one and done, guaranteed. Do not buy this for your second plane. Buy this as your fifth or sixth plane, something like that. I can already tell it's gonna be a beautiful plane. It's probably gonna fly really good. This is not a beginner plane. No. If you buy it as a beginner plane, you're never gonna get past this step. And that's what's so important for you to know if you're new to the hobby. This is something to look forward to, okay? So um, I, I, we never wanna discourage people from forward thinking about you know, what their targets are out in the distant future. But a couple things I wanna teach you about foamies. A, when you fly them and you crash them, they don't look as good after you crash them, but they still fly well, okay? You're gonna learn that. So what you need to do if you're new is get a plane that you can fly, enjoy, crash, repair, enjoy, crash, repair, enjoy, and so on and so forth until it gets so heavy that it won't take off. Then repair it some more. Then you're like, you know what? I think I can move on to the next plane. So then you'll move on to the next plane and you'll, ne you'll not abandon this first plane, but you'll use that as a starter when you're going out for a flying day. And you're like, man, I feel really comfortable now. I'm ready to go into the whatever. Then you bring that plane too and you fly that a little bit and you enjoy it and you're like, oh man, that was a heart attack. I feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack. I need to land. Let's go back to the easy one. So you go to the easy one, you fly it a little bit and always leave on a high note. Fly, crash, leave on a bad note, you'll be more likely to quit. Try to always have a couple planes with you if you possibly can. Yes, we used to drag our planes to places to fly and yes, it was a pain and yes, I get it. And yes, we had like six bean bags that we would put between the planes and that's how we'd store them in the traverse and we would pack up and guess what? Then we ended up with too many kids and we couldn't bring in everybody and it just sort of like broke down from there. And then we figured out how to buy a piece of property and spend ungodly amounts of money to build a runway in front of so our house. So yes, planes. these are the natural progressions of things. But if you skip those last few steps, maybe you don't have so many kids you can't all fit in the car together, then you'll eliminate some of those problems we ran into. But those are real problems that we ran into and we faced them, we overcome them and here we are. So several planes down the road, we're probably 250, 300 planes down the road. This is a plane that should be well within your wheelhouse. 
<clears throat> but you have to make some tough decisions sometimes. What's the best approach to control this thing? There is nothing wrong with using this stabilizer and omitting AS3X and SAFE from this receiver. But why in the heck would you do that? That would be totally stupid. But you can do that and it would be fine if you decide to do it, but it'd still be stupid because this is way more expensive than if you were to get its baby brother that doesn't have the AS3X and SAFE. So I'm a realist, I understand that budget does drive a lot of these decisions for you guys just like it does for us. So in my thinking, the best middle ground step would probably be an AR637T, unless you're doing spoiler-ons on this plane. I don't think you're gonna need it. These things are big inboard flaps. It's probably gonna work great. But if you wanted to do crow because you find that it doesn't slow down enough, this would be a great option. Now, there is some truth claim in this manual to this thing doing something with landing gear function. What is that? Yeah, we don't know. What did it say? Something about nose gear actuation. Because this says actuation. wheel out, and then there's also a rudder out. So my understanding is what this is going to do is it's going to give some sort of a reduced output on the steerable servo for the nose gear. That's my guess. But for now, I think it might remain to be a guess. And here's why because I know how to make this plane shine using the AR637T. And I think that's where I'm gonna put inside of this canopy, cockpit, flying area, battery hatch, whatever you wanna call it, because I know I can make it good on this. And I don't wanna make any guesses on this. Now that's not to say this is a bad choice. I think it's a great choice. If you have an unstabilized receiver, that will do it similar to your Vortex, similar to your Reflex, similar to your A3L. Similar to any external stabilizer that you can get on the market today, we're just gonna lean toward doing what we know is going to work because I want this plane to be awesome, and it will be, because we're gonna make it that way. And that's what we're doing next. So, we're gonna pause, reset some stuff, and then get our radio setup started next. Hopefully that explanation answers all the questions that you don't have to ask in the comments below, but if you still have questions, or if you're still concerned about the way we did things, and you'd like to give me some pointers, which I'm sure you're not afraid of doing, then please do it in the comments below. We've been getting them for years and they only help to sharpen us. And uh, most of you think I'm a tool anyway, so we might as well sharpen this tool. So leave them in the comments below, but don't forget to buy this amazing plane from the links in the video description below. You'll be helping to support our channel with small proceeds from the sale of these aircraft. And that is, after all, how we make these beautiful planes. I was just looking down the length of it to make sure that I didn't have a twist in my vertical stabilizer. And the reason I just did that is because I realized that my decal wasn't perfectly aligned here. And I just wanna show you guys this before we get into the next step. My decals are perfectly aligned on this side. If you look, remember this thing is keyed with this thing mm. in a number of different ways, mm -hmm. okay? That's remember the bread box? Yep. But the decals were applied by humans. So if you go around and mm -hmm. show them this, I saw that out of the corner of my eye and I said, oh, good lordy, lord, lord, I need to check that out. So I did, and I think we're good. Also, another trick. If you're gonna do the blend room trick, which I don't think would be a good idea in this case because you have your power units back here and you have your not powered area up here. If you were to tape this thing together instead of gluing it together, first of all, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you did it, use a thick piece of tape, you're probably gonna have to take this thing out and cut it back in. That tape goes around. First time you take it apart to transport, you cut it, you pull it apart, you get the spars out, and then you fold the whole thing onto its left wing or right wing. You can make it a lot smaller package, but I don't think you're gonna gain as much as by taking off the tail and taking off one wing mm -hmm. and then setting them on top of the other wing. And then you'll be able to get it in. And also, look, these come off easy. They can be left off or they can come off. I would not fly this without these winglets because they look sweet. But there again, if you are gonna fly it without winglets, I believe it will impact the performance because they are, uh, they are gonna make an aerodynamic effect. Okay, so without further ado, next up, radio setup with the NX-8 and the AR-637T. All right, folks, so we're back. We're gonna do the radio setup with the AR-637 like we just talked about. So we're gonna pop the canopy. I got a Gen 2 4000 uh, 6S 50C pack, which is not necessarily what we're gonna be flying with, but just something to get us powered up so we can do our setup. 
and this is actually a little bit smaller than I plan to use in this plane. I'm planning on using a uh, 5,000 or 7,000. I'm just gonna open the straps almost all the way so that it's super easy to slide batteries in and out, but I don't wanna fight the Velcro. Plus this helps me kind of understand exactly how it's gonna fit when I'm trying to slide a battery in to help where I'm, help me know where I'm gonna mount my receiver. Cause these are all things that you kind of have to figure out when you first set up your plane. Now the center gravity marking on this plane is gonna be kind of terrible because it's so far back on a swept wing that they actually have marked if you kind of show them under the side of the wing there. I'm just not sure exactly how to trust that. A couple things to consider. This is an XT90. Yes, you can pop this part off, which we're gonna be doing shortly so we can install this little battery level monitor. But just to show you how this works, everything plugs in, okay? <laughs> Took a long time for that BEC to mm -hmm. lose its power. Okay, so just in thinking about how everything fits, I talked with the camera crew, we're gonna to try to get the gear retracted or uh, extended but there's quite a few little steps we got to do first, and that is up to and including actually putting down something to hold the battery in place. These are going to be a kind of a big battery. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to sit, so I'm not going to glue this down yet. But some of you guys would prefer to use Velcro. I prefer not to use Velcro for a variety of reasons. And uh, basically the gist of it is I don't like being married to a certain position with a certain battery. And so I found that this works super sharp. That's a shelf liner. And once I get this situated, then it will basically give us something to hang onto the battery. And you're noticing that it's a real pain in the butt to get this battery in because it wants to slip. Well, it's not gonna be a pain in the butt when I get ready to fly because by then I will have glued that down with a little bit of foam to foam or similar product, okay? So just for the sake of this video, so I don't have to fight this while we're working, I'm gonna put one strap on there just to hold that in place in case I were to tip this. I won't have a battery careen to the back of the plane and damage something. These are really high quality straps. We have learned in our vast experience with many, many, many planes that the easier it is to put in a battery, the more likely you are to fly it. I know that sounds like a minor issue, but once you've had a few planes, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> we have to mount our receiver somewhere, okay? There's all these openings in here, which is tempting you'd be able to put a receiver in there and it might work. So let's just go ahead and unbox this thing real quick. Obviously there's a singular staple on these receivers from Spectrum. So I'm just gonna pop this sucker out real quick. Now obviously we're gonna link to this receiver as we always do. Between this backing, there's sometimes an instruction manual. In this case, the instruction manual is exposed. So you've got that. It does show you how to do the setup. To a certain extent, it's a little bit limited on what it talks about, so just follow along on one of our videos. If you don't like the way that the wing type is set up on this particular plane, or if you wanna do something different and you're gonna ask a specific question, what I'd ask you to do is consider looking through the playlist for a plane that's similar that we used a receiver on that might answer your questions in that regard. Okay, so we'll let that fall out of the package. Just a couple pieces of tape, hold that down. These antenna, our diversity antennas, so there's two of them. And so you wanna to try to have them not parallel, but perpendicular or perpendicular or perpendicular. You just want them to be at 90 degrees of one another. That helps with diversity so that when you have noise in one axis, you'll be more likely to pick up the other axis. Okay. And that's just a radio thing. It's got nothing to do with spectrum. It's got to do with the technology of the 2.4 gigahertz realm, okay? All right, so now we have obviously an AR637T, which is gonna have a bind button. There's also a bind plug that can be used if you decide to use it. That also gives you a great place to pull power into your controller. And so where's our power coming from? Our power is coming from a BEC, a battery eliminator circuit. So the battery eliminator circuit is gonna be like this, the negative positive. Okay, cool. So now that's gonna be able to be powered up whenever we want. But in this case, what we need to do is we need to do some wing type setup before we could really continue onward. Now, part of the reason that this plane is a bit of a challenge for me is because there is an external stabilizer included. If you decided to use this, yes, you could 
go ahead and go through the full setup on an AR637T. You take full advantage of all the features, with the exception of you're gonna run out of channels if you have a six channel receiver to run this because you need to be able to turn on and off the modes with this. So that means you need seven channels. So just keep that in mind. That means because it's seven channels, you're gonna actually need eight because you can't get a seven channel receiver to save your life. You can get some seven channel receivers, but a lot of times the seven channels include function on and off. So just keep that in mind, okay? So this is just a, a short little 1S micro pH connector, similar to what we used on little indoor flying planes, okay? <clears throat> and usually what I do on these is I will pull the lead out and just brace this with your fingers so you don't rip those out of the connector. Then I just straighten these suckers right up, okay? First thing is I do that. And then what do we wanna do? We wanna eventually get that telemetry plug stuck into this, it says volt, okay? So that can go right there. And then you're like, yeah, but then you've got this hokey wire running through your plane. Exactly, totally true. And yes, I don't like that any more than you, but the reality is it is what we are gonna be dealing with. So in order to figure out where we can land this most appropriately, you can either pop this connector apart and we're gonna do a little surgery here. So I might need a flat bladed screwdriver, but a flat bladed screwdriver is gonna allow us to pop that connector cover off. I'm gonna grab my alternative plan as well, which is going to be, yes, you heard it first time, Brian Phillips, RC, a toothpick. We use toothpicks and Q-tips a lot on this channel. Whatever material gets the job done is what you're gonna need. Bamboo skewers, another big thing we use mostly because of the number of crashes. Okay, so I'm gonna get in here and just try to pull this open. And in order to do that, there's a couple of different pry points where you can pry this open. But at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is you're trying to pop these tabs open. And the easiest way to do it is to just work it back and forth until the thing pops off. But this lead is not super long, so I'm trying to be careful, okay? So you can see how that's constructed, okay? So you see how they've soldered onto the side and that's gonna pull our power for our BC. <clears throat> now, I'm actually gonna unplug that real quick. And ideally, what I usually do is I will take this and twist it or I'll chuck this into my drill and I'll spin it. But I'll show you what that's gonna, the effect that's gonna have. It's pretty simple stuff. You basically spin this and then you end up with, wouldn't you know it, a nice, neat, twisted pair. And that's not to you know, improve the noise characteristics. That's not anything to do with signal interference. That is strictly a looks and neatness thing. And you don't even really have to twist it all that much. But if you chuck this into your drill right here and you brace back here, you can do that in like four seconds. Just be careful, it's malleable and ductile because it's metal. And guess what happens? If you overdo it, you can rip right out of the end of the connector. So just be careful, you don't overdo it. Now, once you get to the other end of the cable, you're gonna be left with two leads. Of course, you need a positive and a negative. That's why you have a black and a red. So the red is gonna go to the positive of your flight pack or the BEC in parallel with your flight pack. If you have multiple flight packs, you can pick one or the other to feed the voltage into on the telemetry on the AR637T or the AR8263 or whatever it is, um, whatever one you decide to pick. But there's a whole series of receivers that will give you the functionality for that telemetry. And yes, we do have the boop, 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 beep, 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 Vario, which is super fancy. <laughs> and Varios are typically used by having a barometer that tells the rate of change in altitude, okay? So yes, with that information, you can make all sorts of cool decisions as a pilot or as an aircraft controller. Like if you were a flight controller, you sh I think I foresee in the future a programmable controller that will give us the ability to make mixed modes that are speed dependent, not throttle dependent, but speed dependent. That would be sweet. You could make a plane very easy to fly if you could make those decisions, okay? So now I wanna go from this pocket to that pocket so I can come back up where this is coming up and make it nice and clean, okay? So I'm just gonna go in here, make a bend. Okay, 
and that's going to go under this little um, tray and then my goal is to get it over to where I can just see just the tip of it and it shouldn't be um, usually too big of a deal to do this but of course this time it's probably going to be a huge pain in the butt and if that's the case I mean anything you do on camera is much harder than it is in real life okay so I'm just going to reach down in there with the forceps grab the tip and then pull it up okay so there it is very simple in that regard and then what I'll do is I'll pull most of the slack and I'll just kind of make this about the same length as my other servo connections. And the reason we do that is because it's going to chase along just like this and then make a little jump up into the volt plug like that. And if you're careful about the way you do it, you can actually do something like this with your cable and then you'll have a nice clean install that's going to be less likely to cause you problems by something getting yanked by a battery lead, for instance, when you're getting ready to plug in your battery at the beginning of your flight ops. Okay, so that's plugged in. And you're probably thinking to yourself, but man, there's, there's gonna be a lot of wires involved there. It's actually not too bad on this plane. I was thinking the opposite. Okay, so now <clears throat> you can see we've got all this excess and like that's gonna be a huge mess. Well, lucky for us, I can just feed the excess back down into that cavity. And then you can just chase up the length of one of your power leads. And in this case, I'm gonna untwist the last little bit like that. And I'm gonna actually go black to black and red to red. And I'm gonna just go in the back side of these uh, little bottom coupler, whatever you wanna call it, call that thing. Now, obviously the best way to do this would be to just get the soldering iron out and just heat up and just dab that onto the side of your terminal. And that would be perfectly appropriate, but I understand that some of you guys are maybe not gonna have immediate access to that. So I'm gonna show you another way. And the other way in this case is not, it's not better. It's actually worse, markedly worse. But keep in mind, telemetry is somewhat fleeting when it comes to radio controlled airplanes because it will not prevent you from crashing, especially if you ignore it like I do. So we're gonna take and use some strippers. Just gonna take a little bit more of that and expose the copper. I'd like to have a little teeny bit more than what was exposed by the factory. Okay, so nothing too terribly difficult there. And then there's a couple of different ways you can do it. This silicone based wire, you could also go into this heat shrink, just slide it down in there if you want. But I'm just gonna go all the way up to the source. Now the beauty of the silicone wire is it's so dang soft. And you see, all you have to do is just get a little edge exposed. Now remember, that's gonna be underneath that little protective cover. Okay, so once you have that there, I can actually use these forceps too to help guide this wire. See, so all I'm gonna do is just slide that in. All it has to do is contact the wire. Okay, so once you're kind of slid down in there, you can, um, <clears throat> go with that now remember this is this is not the only way to do this this is one of the inferior lazy ways to do it but you'll also note that I have built many planes and in doing so I've learned many lessons learned many lessons one of the many lessons I've learned is that nothing lasts forever in this hobby <laughs> and true. so the more effort you put into this sort of thing this step I feel like the more reliant you're going to be on it. And like I said, fleeting is telemetry. Telemetry is a nice tool to have, but not to be depended on. I suggest running timers as a fail safe. Okay, and even timers will fail you. Especially when you ignore them. If you ignore those, they also don't work very good. Okay, so I'm just kind of lifting up on that uh, silicone. And I'm just gonna try to slip that, oops, the doohickey into the, the, the spot there. Okay, so it fell out. We'll try this again now. So if you guys are new to the channel, this is Brian Phillips RC. I'm Brian Phillips, my wife Megan is the beautiful and wonderful camera crew. Of course, she helps us on all the videos because she is one of the best camera crews on YouTube. 
And of course, she is very good at following the planes, which is much harder than it looks. Try it sometime if you don't believe me. And she also is a little bit more involved in the surface stuff right now, which is super exciting for me because I love that she gets in front of the camera for that. Something I've been trying to talk her into for years. And she's finally a little bit more comfortable. I just think she was so intimidated by doing the airplane stuff. And we've been trying to do a little bit of footage on ground vehicles on Wednesdays, of course. By the time you're seeing this video, it might be years later. Maybe we've changed our format a little bit. That's one thing about YouTube. It's always changing. It's always evolving from what it is now to what it's going to be. And so hopefully by the time you see this, it'll be somewhere in the reasonably near future and you'll be seeing it. And you'll be able to timely make a decision to purchase this plane, which is how you can support us financially, either that or Patreon or PayPal. We have all those links down below in the video description. And obviously there's comments down below too. If you have things to add to the conversation, we're just one part of it here. The other part of it is our amazing audience, which you are part of. And we appreciate you guys. You've been a huge, huge part of the success here. <clears throat> we just show up and do the work and then you come and watch. Okay, so now that those are both in, we'll just go ahead and slide that back over and guess what's gonna happen? That's gonna protect the connection that we just established from getting undone easily. And there you have it, guys. That's how easy that can be. You can make it harder, you can make it more robust, a little bit more uh, resilient to damage and things like that. If you were to solder that, it would be a lot stronger. But at the same time, that might come with a certain sense, false sense of security. Okay, cool, so that's all in there, it's ready to go. So now we'll have telemetry with voltage, pack voltage. All right, so now the next step will be pause. We'll come right back for the building the model. Okay, so we have this receiver here now that's just laying here and we need to lay it down somewhere where it can actually reach all the cables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on to any old model because it's a six channel receiver. It shouldn't be complicated. So I'm just happen to have a Mustang pulled up. So throttles on channel one in this case. So the brown is gonna go down and you can tell from on the side here, it says negative plus S. So it's on a raised silk screened marker there or painted minus plus signal, okay? That's on channel one, so we can plug that in real quick. Now remember, we're not receiving battery voltage or BC voltage on that plug. We're getting that from the bind plug in this case. Now you could also put that in parallel with any of the cables via a Y cable. You don't have to use the bind plug, okay? So, but if you want to, you can. Okay, now ailerons. Of course, ailerons are here. So ailerons are on channel two, according to my profile on this plane. On the P51, just a random one we pulled up. It just happened to be the one that was on, okay? Then we have flaps, which is gonna go to channel one, two, three, four, five, six. So the sixth input. Of course, we have command and control of each of these channels, but we also have additional channels. And then we have telemetry channels too that we don't talk about much. Okay, gear, gear is retractable landing gear, okay? Not to be confused with steerable nose gear, okay? Okay, so we have gear. Gear is right before flap, so that'd be channel five. Ooh, now one other thing too here, I've got a rudder and I've got a wheel. And it looks like this wheel goes from here to here, possibly. We're gonna have to find out if that's true. I don't know if that's true because I just honestly don't know. We'll have to find out right now. Let's try this, because there is a female extension there. And then there's elevator. Elevator is channel three, so we can plug that one in. Okay, good. And then this one is rudder. So rudder should command and control both the rudder and the steerable nose keeper. We're gonna find out if that's true. Remember, we did have this jumper here. This jumper would normally interact with this device. So I'm not 100% sure how all this is gonna work, but we'll find out if we need to do something weird and we're gonna share it with you as we do it. So on Brian Phillips RC, you may have noticed that when we make decisions about how we're gonna do radio setup, we usually stick to it, but at the same time, we're not so obtuse as to get married to one solution. We just like AS3X, it's easy to work with, using forward programming and all that. 
It's just really nice. Okay, so now this, <clears throat> let's talk about location for mounting. These big ESC leads are cool, but also kind of like annoying because they're in the way now, sort of. Okay, so I'm gonna just see if I can set that down right there. And it does, that's pretty much a perfect mm, fit. Yeah. Pretty much an absolute perfect joy. So I love the way that sits. In that case, I'm sort of torn. I've got some double-sided adhesive tape that would normally be used for that pulser. So I guess I'm just gonna use this to hold down the receiver because it ends up being about the perfect size. And let's talk about size of this device. This device here, just in consideration, if you're buying this and you're gonna go the simple receiver route and then use this as your stabilizer, which I think is a great idea. Let's look at the size comparison. Look at that size. This is everything, this is just the stabilizer. But there's no reason that you couldn't have your regular, which by the way, the uh, eight channel receiver is wider than that. And then this would go something like that, I assume. And it does fit, cool. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing I was thinking is we may end up using this just for the steerable nose gear. Because maybe the steerable nose gear would be worth the additional complexity to set it up. So we'll see how it works and then We'll make adjustments on the fly. And if you were using the pulsar that it comes with, you wouldn't need, your receiver that you put in wouldn't necessarily need to be level and true. That's true, it could actually it could be anywhere. could just go wherever. But if you have a stabilized receiver and you're using a stabilizer, which would be unusual mm -hmm. and not recommended, then you need to be careful to make accommodations for both. Does that make sense, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick that. There, I kind of want to go back because I can, I can go back and get away with it because it'll just be back a little further and it kind of pulls our wires out of the way. Okay, <clears throat> now you'll notice those antenna are just kind of flopping around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these antenna and make them my subjects. Friend. Okay. So I'm going to tape this on here. Yeah, we're just going to use some clear tape because clear tape is it's generally a great thing to use on antenna, antennas, because antennas, many times, you wanna limit the amount of interference that you're gonna create by gluing them in, or sticking them here, or sticking them there. So my experience has been now, it's the active portion of the antenna that you wanna be most careful with. Okay, so you can see I just taped over that whole circumstance there put it on the middle of that rib there and stuck it down nicely. Super easy, no problems at all. Then I'm gonna take the second one and I don't know, maybe I'll go to the other side and go vertical with it. Hmm, yeah, I should, I should try to see if I can make the angle here. Yeah, those ESC wires are just gonna be a bear cat, aren't they? They're so big too. Yeah, I think we're gonna be fine though if I do that, what I was thinking. So look, 28 millimeters exposed, in case you're wondering, roughly. Okay. So just stick that to the tape. Now I would recommend against grabbing onto the actual antenna if you can avoid it. But in this case, I'm gonna have to hold something. And it's kind of got me a little bit beside myself here. Okay, gotta be super careful with that. Remember I was telling you to go 90 degrees of each other. Yeah. Now you can also take an X-Acto knife and make a slice and just stuff that into the foam. See how I, I made a slit there on the tape? That's just to hold everything in place. All right, so now that should get us in pretty good shape to where now that all that we're left with is the actual profile for the aircraft, okay? And binding, so we're gonna work through those steps as we go. Now, the AS3X setup and everything is gonna require us to move around the plane, so I guess I'm gonna put away some of the tools. That was a very easy radio install. I mean, super, super mm -hmm. easy. In terms of the physical dimensions that we have to work with, and in terms of 
just the space. I feel like some of these planes anymore we get, they're extremely space deprived. So this does not have that problem, okay? Okay, so now I usually like to sit uh, with the plane going away from me so that it's very easy to kind of gauge where everything sits and the direction of each of the control surfaces. Also, you need to be careful on a plane stand that you're gonna clear your landing gear when you open the gear or if you would power it if the gear would open on their own. I'm gonna just lay this here. Obviously, we have a little bit of work ahead of us on the radio setup before we actually go ahead and power it up. So I'll sit something like this and it makes it a lot easier on me. So, starting from scratch, click and scroll all the way down Go to system setup, disconnect RF, that light goes off. Go to model select, click model select, scroll all the way down. Add new model, an acro, create. Takes a few seconds for this to happen. And sometimes a little bit longer. <laughs> Okay, now model type, that's what we just set the acro. If you change it, it'll reset everything. Model name, this is where you type in your name. See, I have 113 colon space and that's the airplane. So in this case, this is the J65 from XFly. So <clears throat> I could either do XFly here or JFly. What should I do? I'm or to J65 think, business jet. I think J65 and then like twin 70 or something. Okay, so we'll pause. I'm using a legacy keyboard, by the way. That is an option on the NX8. All right, so we have the J65 twin 70 millimeter X-Fly. Aircraft type. We need to set up a regular flap and a regular aileron. And then the tail type is normal. And I'm just gonna change my drawing here. I think there's like a citation or something similar in here. Eh, that's close enough. Okay, then we are gonna need a uh, flight mode on this one. So I'm gonna turn flight mode. Okay, so think about this for a second. I want flaps, landing gear, flight mode, throttle cut. If we ever would increase or you know upgrade this to avians for thrust reverse, that'd be over here. So switch D. So I'm gonna click and assign switch D. So we have flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three, okay? And then channel assign, let's look what we have by default. We have gear on A, we have flaps on auxiliary two. And then what's on B? Hmm. Yeah, it looks like flaps are already there. But then I'm gonna use B for something else. So I think that ends up needing to be D. Switch D, right? Mm-hmm, I think so. And then this will be auxiliary three for a master game. Okay, so walking out. So, then we can click down, set up throttle cut, just sort of in order. Set that to switch H. Look at that, not moving, perfect. Throttle cut's off, and now it's working, it's live. Okay, throttle cut's on. Okay, then flap system, we wanna assign that to switch B. I don't know where we wanna be yet, so what I wanna do is I wanna set, you know, just something minus and something plus, okay? And it doesn't even matter what, we're gonna have some level of adjustment. So we'll just do like six and 10, okay? And then we'll do speed at two seconds. It's a pretty big plane, we might need more. Okay, so that's just a good starting point. Okay, so walking out of there, we'll set the timer. They said uh, five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Five to eight minutes. Five to eight. Yeah. So we'll do a one out on. That means that anything over 25% starts the timer. I don't want a one minute warning. I don't want a 20 second more minute. I just want a 10 second countdown with voice. Expiration, I want tone and vibrate and then a tone every minute thereafter. I don't know, maybe we will. Let's do a, let's do, let's do voice at one. See how that works. Just to start with. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, then telemetry is gonna auto config and everything else we should be setting up later. And there's also some audio events that we could set up for the D switch, but let's go ahead and come back to that after we've assigned everything, okay? All right, so we're ready to bind. Throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down, 
Everything's neutral and ready to rock and roll. So what I'll do is I'll walk around to the front of the plane with the transmitter in hand. Since this is an EDF jet, I don't have to worry about chopping my hand off with props, but I do have to pretend like it could lunge forward, so I'm gonna control the plane or be able to control the plane in a moment's notice, okay? So this is an XT90, not an XT60. I may have said 60 earlier and I meant to say 90. Mm. This is an IC5, it has the smart pin. The smart pin is unnecessary on an XT90, but it doesn't interfere with anything. So all you need to do just to be feel comfortable is verify your polarity is the same, power is positive. The orange and red, black to black. Okay, here we go. So very easy to plug in, beautiful LEDs. We have flash, we have flash, we have a strobe on the back and it looks like our red light is not on. It is on, but only faintly. So that's a bummer. And then our landing lights, I don't see, they are on, so that's good. And I see an anti-crash beacon on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then I see a strobe on the back, beautiful. Everything but the red light. I don't know what's going on with that yet. We'll figure it out. Okay, so in this point, I need to go ahead and press the bind button, which is just on the top of the receiver. It's super easy to get to. Just once, there's, a blue, or there's an orange flashing light. I'll click and scroll down to bind. Bind. Okay, everything seems kosher there now. Bind complete, okay, good. So this red light does concern me. It is a slow flicker, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And then I don't really know, is the bottom one a red flashing light? It is yeah, a red flashing light. Bottom. Okay, so I don't know what happened with that. I'm gonna see if I can wiggle the wing. There it goes, came alive. Now, what did I do? I massaged the wing until I got good purchase. You definitely wanna check it because my servo is not working. So sweet, so sweet. Okay, we're in the middle setting for flaps. There's the outboard. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna set my flap modes. Now that we have this turned on, checking the elevator. Up is wrong, okay? Roll left is roll left, roll right is roll right, elevator up, elevator down is wrong. So let's fix that now, servo set up, travel, reverse, elevator flip. Now look at the elevator, up is up, down is down. Roll left is roll left, roll right is roll right. Why would you check that again, Brian? Because every time you make a change, double check your work. There's only three primary control surfaces. If you get any of them wrong, you're gonna crash. Maybe the rudder not, but everything else. Rudder left and right, that's also wrong. So I'm gonna go to rudder, Click the reverse, rudder left, rudder right, rudder left, rudder right, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Okay, gear switch coming. Gear up, gear down. Oh yes, did the nose gear go? Yep. Oh, so gorgeous. Those landing gear look amazing. Roll left, or excuse me, Y'all left, y'all right. Y'all left. That is correct. That's, excuse me, that's y'all right, y'all left. Yep. My apologies, guys. I was just calling it out backward. And then let's close the gear. Oh man, those gear door looks sweet on the main. Oh yeah. Okay, let me yes. show them the lights from the front. Okay, do the lights come on and off automatically? Steerable, steerable. Lights are on right now. Yep. Oh yes. Off. So there is a sequencer controller on that. Do the... The forward facing lights evidently stay on. Mm -hmm. And just for the sake of argument, I'm totally okay with that. I don't really care that much. What I do care about is making sure that my left wing doesn't fail to load because of a connection issue. So we're gonna wanna verify that. Also that red light and that green light would be a telltale sign that things should work but your first and last response should be, does it move? And does it move the right direction? Okay, now let's talk about flaps. We were talking about flaps and I didn't get into it. It's a flap system. So I happen to pick minus 26. I'm just gonna go minus 100% and then plus 100%, okay? So there's three, three steps. So it'll be minus 100, um, zero, and then plus 100, okay? This is just total guesswork right now, okay? You never know what direction they're gonna go until you do it. Okay, so that's actually, I've got that backward. 
okay? So that's pointing toward me, so that'd be the home position. I actually want that to be the other way. So I can do this two ways. They can either rotate the servo or just flip this. I'm gonna flip this. So I'm gonna do the minus down here. And then I'm gonna do a plus here. So you can hit clear to go to zero, just to make it faster, and then scroll all the way up. Now we may not want that much deflection, but that's the way I'm gonna set it for now. So I can go into the full home position. And I'm just looking with my eyes to make sure I'm not binding and I'm not perfect. Guys, I gotta say, these X-Fly models have been really good in that regard. We haven't had like any problems with stuff like that. So that's the full up flying position. Take off position would be there and then landing position would be there. Okay, so now, get the chair out of the way. We haven't checked CG or anything like that, but we are like really close to being done with this. This is a complex plane. I'm actually kind of like, okay, what did we miss? <laughs> we haven't missed anything that I know of. Don't say it yet. It's been a very easy build. We're not done yet. We still have to do AS3X and safe and all that. But I'm saying even at that, with that consideration, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, that landing gear looks so good. Did you see I almost hit that light? I did, I was watching wow. it. Wow. And then watch your antennas when you sit down. Okay, I don't know if I can lay this all the way down. Oh yes, I can, yeah, that's so good. Go. I'm telling you, I don't know if it's just pure luck or if they thought of that, but this plane stand is working perfect. It really does fit. Like okay, so a couple things to consider. These are ball links, okay? And I want this to be the home position so you can see, I don't want it to bind. I don't want it to overdrive. So I need, I need to grab this with three points of contact or a pair of needle nose and then twist it a couple of times. And all I'm gonna do is just do that until such a time that this appears to be where it needs to go, plus maybe a quarter turn, okay. There we go. Yes, you can put those on by hand. You do not have to do anything special, but you can. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Wow. And yes, it does miss your landing gear door. And by the way, these gears, the, the trailing link, look how phenomenal that is. That is such a good actuation. It actually looks like it's gonna do something. And then yes, there is a spring-loaded nose gear too. Amazing, and it's a soft spring. Thank you, X-Fly. Thank you for doing that. Nobody gives us soft springs. Give us soft springs or give us soft tires. Pick one or both, please. Okay, pushing the, the flaps down. We're gonna do the same thing. You can see obviously this would be way too far out. So I have to hold this with three points, two fingers, one thumb. Why do we do that? <clears throat> you have to hold it still so it doesn't just spin. So you don't rip the control arm, put a bunch of stress on it or grab needle nose pliers. See, if you do it with two, it's very hard to stop it from spinning. Okay, another couple turns, or half turns, I should say. And that's pretty close, actually. Nope, I gotta go half a turn more. Ooh, man, that's like bottomed out, I think, in there. You don't want this to have more pressure than that. It can cause problems. So I just wanna show you the alternative. If you use a pair of needle nose pliers or Lyman pliers, I'll grab Lyman pliers because they got a little wider head on them. Remember, this is a full model, so be careful not to drop these on there. So you can hold this very tight, and then once you hold it tight, you can actually twist that to the exact position you want and make it square. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hold that where it goes. Make sure you're, you're satisfied with the position. I am not, actually. I feel like I'm still a little bit too far because this is pushed down and that's like perfectly level. So I'm gonna go, see if I can go one more half a turn. Oh man, that's wanting to break this thing, I think. Oh, that's, yeah, not enough. Whew, that thing is, that's perfect. It's where it's gonna be. Now, we have a tool for this. I'm just gonna use the wrong tool for the job because I can, and it's not gonna hurt anything, okay? Take off flaps, landing flaps. Absolutely gorgeous action. Now, that being said, as gorgeous as it may be, having those big barn door flaps, I don't think we want barn door flaps for takeoff flaps. That's too much deployment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this position. You can see what position you're in by that little box. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go to this position and I'm gonna favor do the plus side. I'm gonna do it like that, and maybe 60, okay? So just a small amount of deflection and just walk it up a little bit more. So there's 40, okay, so that's pretty sweet. Okay, so, so take off and then barn door landing flaps. Yeah, that's so sweet. Okay, now, <clears throat> secondarily, I wanna flip this plane over. We can probably go ahead and, we're close to being able to put it on its landing gear, but I just gotta, this thing is feeling pretty heavy. Do you see the CG mark right here? That's tail heavy right now. Can I lay this down there? Yes, you're good in the back. Okay. And am I missing my mains if I need to collapse the gear? Yes, you would be. Okay, so let's go ahead and get radio set up. Finish first. Okay. All right, so we have flaps set up. We have our elevator correction. You can see it goes down just a little bit, shown from the length here. Like here. Elevator up, elevator down. Okay, so as you can see, we're mostly smooth up here and we're mostly smooth here. With takeoff flap deployment, there's barely any movement. With landing flap deployment, there's also barely movement. I don't know how much we're gonna balloon on this plane, I'm just not sure, because the flaps are actually not completely inboard, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. So we may not have enough, we may have too much, we may not actually have it in the right direction, because swept wing uh, airliners and warbirds, I've experienced sometimes the flap correction gets a little bit upset and it has to run in different directions. So sometimes you don't need any, but we'll find out here in a few minutes when we're ready to fly. So first things first, flight modes now. Nothing should change here because we haven't made any assignments. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go to telemetry and let's double check what we've got. Okay, look, we got volts, cool. So now let's walk over. Flight pack, right there. Altitude, right there. And then AS3X stuff is not set up. There's your Vario. But of course we don't have the boop, 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 beep, 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 boop, 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 beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, boop. There's not much change from that axis, but if I do this, you can see it change up and down. Pretty cool, okay? So we're gonna go down to forward programming now. Gyro settings, first time setup. Make sure the model has been configured, including wing type, reversing, travel, trim, etc., before continuing setup. Okay, we have done all that. We know that we're rolling left, we're rolling right. Elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, steerable left. Y'all right, steerable right. Kickoff flaps, landing flaps, everything is set. Retracts are not set correctly yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back. This doesn't actually matter as it pertains to the AS3X and safe, but I'm still gonna change it anyway. I want my retracts to be down in this condition and up when they're pulled toward my belly. So I'm gonna go in to, oops, reverse. Get, get. Okay. So now they're down. When I'm ready to fly, I pull them up. When I'm ready to land, the front nose gear didn't go all the way. Oh. When I'm ready to fly. Oop. Oh, what happened to the gear door? The gear door popped funny? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. So what happened there? Let's check. Oh, it got stuck funny. Let's try it again. Very simple system. What's happening is when the landing gear hits, it pushes into the spring and then it pulls the thing closed, okay? If you have problems with that, one suggestion would be to shorten the spring a little bit. That would help with that. And you also note that there's a bit of an overlap issue there. Now, is that gonna be a deal breaker? I don't think so, but I don't wanna see this get pulled down. And that is a beautiful landing gear. Oh my goodness. Looks absolutely fantastic. And I feel a little bit of resistance on there and normally I would be a little bit upset about that. But to be honest, I kind of want the resistance. So it's gonna give us a braking effect. Okay, gear up. Why are gear up right now? Because we need to finish doing some more setup and I want them out of the way. 
Okay, so going back through the setup, we're gonna go back into first time setup on forward programming. What is forward programming? It's where we go radio to radio. We talk from the transmitter into the radio receiver in there, and then we do some configuration, okay? Gyro setup, first time setup, <clears throat> everything's set. Any wing type changes will require it to be relearned. Fine, okay. Set at level and press continue. 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 You didn't set it on snows. Oh, I didn't set it on snows. Whoops. I totally missed that. Sorry, guys. I can also set it manually. Set it level, hit continue, set it on its nose, and then be ready to hit continue. In this case, I'm gonna set it on its nose, and the camera crew is gonna stay right where she is so I don't even have to move again. Okay, watch the tail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's set on its nose-ish. And let's check the orientation to reality. Okay, everybody come look inside. Pull up, see the direction that that's facing? This is the same direction the plane is facing, and look at that. It's got a little drawing of the way the receiver's set. And I agree with the drawing, the drawing is correct. Okay, so we're good on that, so it's orientation five, and that's just a setting within there, so we don't need to know what all that means, it doesn't matter, we can just go to continue and accept. Gain channel select, I wanna use the knob which is set to aux three, so it gives you a little shortcut there so you can remember. There you go. Now that's our master gain. We can hit apply, it's gonna reboot. This is the time when if you have a throttle issue, then throttle may actually kick. So just be prepared to secure your plane if that would happen. Okay, go back into forward programming now. Now gyro setting, now we can do more things because you see, Flight mode setup. I want to change this. See how it says aux one, aux two, and they're both set to the D switch. Flight mode auxiliary one is set to flaps. Mm -hmm. So just don't listen to some of this stuff it gets confusing. Okay. Now look for the change. Flight mode three. Perfect. Flight mode two. Flight mode okay. So as you can see, you can tell what mode you're in and you can see every time you make a change of state on the button. So if I want this to have the S3X off, now it's off, but I want it on in this setting. <clears throat> now, first time safe setup. Before setting up safe, a flight mode channel must be, I already did. So I'm just gonna confirm it's already set. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna hit continue. Select the desired flight mode, this one. Okay. So now look at the attitude of the plane. Does that look level to you? It looks pretty level to me, but I've got a little bit of a roll attitude on there, or a little bit of a, my pitch is probably about perfect. Does that look pretty close now? Looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna relearn these positions, because you see how it says minus one, minus two? Yeah. So the pitch, that's what it's gonna do when you turn on safe, that exact position, okay? So now I'm gonna continue onward. Okay, so on flight mode three, it says safe is off. Flight mode two, flight mode one. None of them are on. Flight mode three. I want to turn safe on with self level and angle demand. Okay. Then it's off. Flight it's also off. <clears throat> I don't care about any of the gains. I'm just going to apply the settings. Now it's going to save it to memory, and then it doesn't have to use forward programming each time. Now watch. Two dances, not one. That means that AS3X and SAFE are both active. Okay, so click list. Now everything is set on SAFE. So what we can do is we can elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. We haven't given throttle, so AS3X isn't active, but watch this, elevator up, no AS3X. 
Oh, well, look at that. Roll. Now watch this. I'm going to come out of safe. AS3X is off. And AS3X is on. Okay, now how do I know all these things? Because I'm the one that set it up, so I know. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to tell. With safe, you're going to limit your output. Okay? So throttle cuts on, but I'm going to shut it off, and I'm going to give some throttle. By the way, that's about 30% throttle. That's Amazing. Crazy. And those are very well-refined <laughs> EDFs. Okay, so now AS3X should be working. I'm going to just move the plane up, down. You're not going to be able to tell, but I can hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we going to do to make it easier to tell? We're going to change the gains. How do we change the gains? This knob, right? Nope, wrong. We're going to actually change the gains by a tune of 4X. So I'm going to click, scroll down to the forward programming, connecting, gyro settings. AS3X settings, see this 1X? Four times, watch this. All the way up. Now I'm just gonna pivot the plane. Up, down, up, down. See how easy it is to see? Gains all the way down to nothing. Gains all the way up. Okay, now that it's all the way up, I can see all the controls and the directions they're gonna move. So when I lift up the swing, it should go up. When I push the swing down, it should go down. Check both wings. So I can grab this, a big plane. So I'm gonna check the elevator quick because I can do that quick. Down, goes down, up, goes up. Now, I'm watching the red wing here. Up, goes up, down, goes down. Watching this wing, up, goes up, down, goes down. Now I'm gonna yaw toward the window. Yaw toward the window, yaw toward the door. Everything is working in the correct direction. Now, <clears throat> that's just AS3X, which is the basis for SAFE. AS3X stands for artificial Stabilization 3-axis, AS3X. That's the basis for SAFE, a sensor-aided flight envelope. Sensor-aided flight envelope allows for angle demand, also known as auto leveling, okay? So when you let go of the sticks on a normal plane, it would just keep rolling or pitching and then eventually <laughs> crash in a million pieces. If you let go of the sticks with SAFE on, it's gonna fly and attempt, when, when the wing is pushed down, it's gonna bring it back to a level configuration. When the nose is pushed down, it's going to bring it back to a level configuration, not just countering environmental impact. Because AS3X, on the other hand, even if you're pointed down or you're pointed left, it will just try to restore that position because it realized that you didn't give it any input to roll, my left hand did. So it's going to resist that with contrary input. That's what we tested so far. Now that SAFE is on, it will try to auto level the plane. So the first thing you can do is look at the elevator. Look at that, the elevator's stuck up. Now it's level. Now watch the elevator, it's stuck down. Now it's level because the plane's level. Now watch this. As you slowly roll the plane to an upside down condition, look at the ailerons. They're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. They're still fighting. There's nothing happening. They're very disappointed. Oh goodness gracious, we're gonna crash. Let's go the other way. That's the easiest way to test, put it upside down. Look for that little automatic switch between left and right. So we know that AS3X is working. We know that SAFE is working. We know that all three axes of control are working in the correct direction. We also know that we have the gain set to four times. To be honest, you could leave this at four times for your maiden because if you need a lot, you've got it. My experience has been that we never need quite that much. So we're gonna put it on one times and hope for the best and leave it about 50%. Now, why do we care? Why not just leave it on four times? Because <clears throat> when I'm done using this plane, I could always go back in and set it from four to one, but I want you guys to know where we started from for one thing. And for two, after having flown this the first time, once you've determined, say you're on four times, that's four, this is zero. That's two, that's one, that's three, okay? So if you're on one times, this is zero, this is one, this is half, this is quarter, this is three quarter, this is half. Now if it's on two, this is two, this is zero, this is one, this is half, this is three quarters, excuse me, one and a half. Are you making the connection here? 
what's happening is the master gain is the amplitude by which all three axis of controls are going to be applied. If you had a larger transmitter, you could actually use sliders to have a control axis for your pitch and roll separately. Your master gain would not be the only gain. You could set a gain for your roll stabilizer, your pitch stabilizer, and your yaw stabilizer, which would be incredibly cool. However, it's also incredibly a lot for a pilot to do while they're trying to fly a brand new plane. So I kind of tend to like just having one for the beginning. Now that's to be said, if I had an NX-12, excuse me, an X-10, or if I had something greater than that, like, a, like an IX-20, then sure, I'd be trying to do that because it'd be super cool. But I do like the simplicity of this. So I go to take off, I start in the middle of one. So that means I'm at 0.5 master gain. If that's satisfactory and I have good response and I give it full throttle and I'm doing high speed passes and I see no oscillation, which is a self-induced over control and overreaction and then subsequent reaction, the opposite direction, which is an overreaction, which subsequently leads to an overreaction the other direction and it gets worse and worse and worse. You have to slow down to fix that. You slow down or you shut off your stabilizer. So you're in AS3X, it's, it's oscillating, shut it off or slow it down. Either one. If you don't take any action, you'll eventually lose control and crash. If you're going really fast, full speed, throttle cuts on by the way, full speed, you're flying along, you're going like 70 miles an hour and it starts oscillating, back off, it'll stop oscillating. Or alternatively, shut off your gain or shut off your, your uh, AS3X, but then you're going to have no stabilizer or leave it on and just turn the knob down a little bit. Alternatively, if you're at full speed and you feel like you're getting kicked around like crazy from the wind and you can see the difference, it's obvious to a pilot that has any experience, then you can turn this up until you see oscillation and then back it off. So you literally get yourself into a flat and level flight without safe. You go as fast as you can and then you just adjust the knob until it oscillates and then go back a little bit and then you fly as usual for the whole rest of the flight. You get to the ground, let's say you ended up here. You're at 75%. That means if you go to 2X, then you're gonna be here. If you go to 1X, you're gonna be there. If you go to 4X, you're gonna be like down here somewhere. So what I try to do, I aim to have this knob in the neutral middle position between models but I still have flexibility to make an adjustment on the fly, pun intended. That's why I went back to 1X. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna walk out. I know some of you guys are scratching your head thinking that's way too much information. I can't get it, you're overcomplicating a simple solution. Not really. So let's look at this. <laughs> By the way, I've gotten a lot worse than that. So flight <laughs> mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three. I have no idea what that means. I don't want this chick to be talking about it while I'm trying to fly, like what the heck is these flight modes? I don't know what that means. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set an audio event. Audio event. Flight modes. Flight mode one. This is where you type it in. Highlight, clear, clear, boom. Then we can set this up for AS3X. So I'm gonna scroll in AS3X. I'm sure some of you guys hate the fact that I use the legacy keyboard. It's super easy to change, it's in system setup. I like the legacy keyboard, I feel like there's a lot less dinking around. You might disagree, and if you do, fine. You just don't like change. Okay, now you have to scroll way down to almost here, so we'll pause while we do that. So if you were using an, an external stabilizer, you could put like stability mode on here, instead of AS3X, okay? But in my case, it's AS3X, so I want it to say AS3X. There's safe mode. So there's AS3X. So now, mode to AS3X mode. cool, okay? So now flight mode two is off. So I think off is like way at the bottom also. All of them are pretty much way at the bottom. Okay, so I lied, it's a little bit above. Now I'm gonna type the word off. <clears throat> okay, so off is here. Okay, and then this one's gonna be safe mode. So we'll scroll all the way down to about here. 
Okay, so safe mode. And then we'll go in here. This is just the readable part. So sensor, aided, flight, envelope. Okay. Very good, okay? All right, so now as you're flying along, you can see on the screen it says AS3X, off or safe. Very cool. Throttle cut, you could do an audio event for that. We're gonna set up Expo next, you could do an audio event for that too. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna show you how to set up the Expo. Now what's so magical about Expo? Expo softens the sticks. This is my basic setup for every plane that I do by default, and then I just adjust from there accordingly. Lower my rates a little bit. Okay, so I start here. I have a doubling effect if I need more Expo, or I have a halving effect if I need less. I do that for all three control channels, and I tie it to one switch. But Brian, what if you need to adjust just one axis? Then adjust it when you land. You can get to the ground, trust me. Okay. Then, in this setting, I reduce the rates to 90 from 100. All right, so then I'm gonna go to the elevator, go to the switch, assign it to switch F, 5% for the lowest setting, 10% for the setting we expect to use, 20% for that, and then reduce rates, and then go back to the middle. Switch it to rudder, highlight the switch, select in the zero position, we're gonna do five, then we're going to set up 10, then we're going to set up 20, and then reduce the rates down to 90. Okay, that's where we start. If we find that we need less expo, meaning it's too softened, you go to this and you have a less softened feel. Let's say it feels too touchy, then you would go here. The same is true for any of the three axes. So suppose your aileron axis, the roll axis is just too soft. Then you would go up here, you would tolerate any sort of deviation on the elevator for yaw axis, <clears throat> excuse me, the elevator for pitch axis and the rudder axis for yaw. At which point you would land and then you would make that new setting your middle and you would just leave them. And you don't have to adjust them all at the same time. Okay, so let's test our timer, throttle cuts on. Timer starts when you go over 25%, you can see the 25% there. Now keep in mind, this won't activate the S3X because the receiver doesn't even know that we have gone past, but the transmitter knows. If you were to shut this off and go over 25, that feels nice, then it would know, okay? So that all makes sense, I hope. And really at this point, that is fully set up with the exception of figuring out the CG, which we're gonna do right now as our last glory moment. Now, they mark the CG as being 290 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing. That is pretty hard to mark because our calipers only go to like 190. Mm -hmm. So we have to go 11.14 inches. Why? Because we have regular tape measure. Now, what the heck is 0.417 mil, uh, uh, inches? Well, let's just call it just a little bit shy of half an inch, okay? If you really wanna figure out the equivalent measurement then what you would do is you would figure out the nearest eighth or 16th or 32nd of an inch. So the way you do that is you divide that number by 16, okay? And then you can figure out which one it gets closest to. In my case, I'm just gonna go with about 11 and a half. Now, why is that good enough for what we're doing here? Because look how far back you're looking. This is gonna be a hard one to tell, okay? You're measuring the CG and because of the wing shape, you're measuring here to 11 and a half, okay? So from here to 11 and a half, you're coming way out here anyway, okay? So at the end of the day, I don't really think it's like super duper critical. Okay, so 11 and a half is here. You're kind of ballparking it anyway. By the time you get it, I think the CG needs to be right here at this intersection, okay? Now, because that CG is there, what we can do is we can just take out this battery. We've already established everything is set. <clears throat> a couple things too. Some people, and I get a lot of feedback from people that have problems when they are flying a new plane, okay? They say, oh, I got a plug and fly as a beginner. 
Pump the brakes. Do not get a plug and fly as a beginner. Get a bind and fly. Take advantage of every opportunity to find success when you're a new pilot. I'm not necessarily saying you're ready to fly. It is not a mistake to buy a programmable transmitter right off the bat if you know you're gonna be obsessive like I am, okay? Or if you maybe have you know, no budget requirement and you don't mind throwing a thousand bucks at a hobby, that's fine. But the thing is, by the time you buy your first plane, your first transmitter, your first nice charger, you're gonna be a thousand bucks deep, okay? That's the reality. If you're buying a nice high quality plane. Or you could get a ready to fly that's a little bit cheaper, get you in the air. The basic flight controls are gonna make sense. They're gonna translate well into a programmable transmitter. But do not go out and buy this plane as a beginner and expect to find success. You won't find it. You don't know what you don't know and you'll find out very quickly when it's in a pile of ruins. And then you're coming back and watching this and saying, gosh, I wish I would've watched this video before I crashed my $1,800 commitment. <clears throat> and that's really what you're gonna be doing. So we're here to help you avoid those mistakes, not because we wanna hold you down like the man is holding you down. No, that's the opposite. We are the furthest from that as we could be. We hate all these government regulations that are coming down the pike. They're just a total joke. As far as you ask me, ignore every bit of it. Keep flying, keep doing what you're doing. Do it in a safe way. Don't be rude. Be nice to your neighbors. Um, you know, Build good relationships with the people that you're gonna be impacting when you're flying. This is the best and only way to handle it. If you piss people off flying, there's a good chance they're gonna cause difficulties for you in life. That's just the way it is. It sucks, but that's the way it is. When you fly, uh, whether it be PPG, ultralights, real general aviation, anytime you deal with a government bureaucracy, but just remember, they got bigger fish to fry. So just keep flying, do it as good as you can, be as safe as you can, register, do whatever you wanna do, I don't care. I, I, we're just, as far as I'm concerned, right like that, in this one, out that one. I don't care, send out as many bulletins as you want. And by the way, why do they need our email if they're not gonna send us stuff? Screw those people. So anyway, rant over. I'm gonna unbuckle this battery. It's obviously such a pressing issue to the federal government to mandate about our toys. Don't you have better things to do? Like fix the gas prices? Yeah, no kidding. Morons. So, 7,000. That's what I'm planning on using, okay? 7,000, 6S. If you work for the federal government, I stand by what I said. Okay, open that up. Open that up. Okay, and then we've got the third one here. Open that one up. Okay, we've got three positions here. You can actually put this battery either direction, I believe. There is enough depth and there's enough void here, okay? So I actually kind of like the vertical position better. Yeah, but I don't know for sure that it's gonna fit, so I'm gonna leave that little uh, pad down there. Again, this first time is a little bit more of a pain than what it's gonna be under normal circumstances, so don't write too much into this. And also remember that once you get this set, it's a lot easier going forward. Just make sure you have a good bite on your Velcro. If you don't have enough bite, you may have to size down a little bit. I'm at 15 on my battery. Oh, okay. Well, that's good because we're almost done. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we've got that held in there, pretty much centered, no fiddling around. We obviously know we can reach, but because I don't wanna actually plug in the power, I'm just gonna plug it in and simulate being plugged in, just so we can, I mean, it's a heavy connector. It doesn't make a small difference. Okay, stick this in, make sure it clicks. We have a good clean connection, so we're good there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and find the CG marking, which is about here, and I'm gonna bring my finger in along the central axis. And that's where I'm gonna test from. And this is a huge plane, so you do have to get a little bit creative. And by golly, that feels pretty freaking good. I'm gonna actually open the gear, which means I need to power the plane up. Okay, so I've already got the transmitter on. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna plug this in. XT90 works perfectly fine with the EC5s. No problems at all. There's a nice little pocket it sort of fits into. Waiting for all the dancing to take place. The dancing is an indication that the AS3X and SAFE are activated. 
And by the way, if you're working for the federal government, one more thing too, just so you can have it of record. If you didn't find any educational purposes in this video, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so open your freaking eyes. Maybe go work for somebody that does something useful. So anyway, rant over. Holding my fingers here. And here it is. So as you can see, it's leaning forward a little bit. That's an unusual way of holding a plane for CG tests. The reason I'm doing it that way is because it just is big. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna open the gear now. I have to cycle them because I had them in the stowed position. Okay, gear down. The nose gear sweeps back, which means there is a shift in CG, okay? So in order to hold this plane, I'm just gonna pick it up, move this out of the way. And I'm gonna put this down. All right, so if you wanted to pick this up, you don't have to pick it up where it's marked over here. You can pick it up anywhere along that central axis, okay? You can also look where the wing spar is on most planes. That's generally gonna be about where the CG is anyway. And they have marked it nicely for us. It's just, it's just gonna be kind of hard to get at it. Okay. So normally I would try to pick up a plane like this upside down, but I just, I'm actually not 100% sure how I'm gonna test this one. Okay. There are stands you can use for this sort of thing. I'm gonna do my very best. It is kind of hard to test this. It feels a little bit on the tail heavy side. I would say that we're dang close. And by the way, do you see it shaking? This mm -hmm. thing's heavy. I'm a strong guy and that is a lot of weight out there. So just be aware, on some planes, it gets to the point where it's not that it's unpractical to test. It's that you will literally ding your plane up if you're not careful because of the foam. So just, Take the center of gravity markings worth a grain of salt, okay? It's important that you can test it, but you know, an eighth of an inch forward or an eighth of an inch backward is not gonna make it unrecoverably unflyable. In my experience, do I have that marker over there still? No, you it's right do here. do not, yep. Okay. So what I wanna do, and this is something we started doing a couple of years ago. We started marking where we believe the center of gravity to be by locating where the battery is. Now look where those straps are. Good job, Axfly. Pretty good. One of the few manufacturers that actually has the straps in the right place on an EDF jet. Okay. You also note that this is a bigger battery than they asked for. Okay. Now, what do we do? We do an arrow, and that indicates the direction the wires go. Then, when I pull out this plane in like three months or something, and I'm ready to go fly it, I can't remember what the battery size is. I'm only you know, two seconds away from seeing that because all I have to do is pop off the cover and I know exactly what's going on. Now, that being said, that is a huge battery opening. I mean, you mm -hmm. could get some big old batteries in there. And um, for what it's worth, I think that we're close enough to where if we wanted to go out and fly it, we could totally go fly it and we would be just fine getting up in the air because I think what's gonna happen is we're probably gonna wanna tweak it a little bit forward or a little bit back and if in doubt, go a little bit nose heavy, but just only do that if you have a long runway, okay? Couple thoughts. Nose heavy planes tend to fly a little bit easier than tail heavy planes. Aggressively nose heavy means you're not gonna have enough elevator to climb, okay? Which means you may not get off the ground. That's better than being excessively tail heavy where you have so much pitch control and authority on your elevator that you can't get the thing landed but also overstable, meaning that it's penduluming, it's always pulling you forward like this, that means you're gonna have very limited control authority. And if you're doing a climb, you might be okay under power, but then when you're, you're coming in out of power, you might go down too quick and then you're gonna end up crashing. So it's always a finite balance. You do want the center of gravity right because that makes all the control surfaces pivot you upon that surface, okay? or upon that, that, that point in the center. Now there's also a center mass that's left and right. Nobody ever worries about that on, on small models like this. It's not a big deal unless you have a, some strange airplane. Most of the airplanes we deal with are symmetrical, left and right are the same, or at least close enough to be fine on a plane. 
Um, you know, you might have some wiring over here, you might have some wiring over there that isn't on the other side, but it's gonna generally balance out pretty close. Um, okay, so I think we're good there on that center of gravity, and I think the battery is gonna be right where it is. Now, if you go to a smaller battery, the impact of the smaller battery is gonna be proportionally smaller and smaller and smaller. So to make it nose heavy, it's gonna have to go further forward on a small battery than if you have a big battery, and that's because you are in front of the center of gravity and you've got a lever action going here, okay? So if you have a very small battery that's still 6S, you're gonna have to have that sucker way up here. So I wouldn't recommend it. And also, because this is a twin 70 with two 60 amp ESCs, there is a good chance you're gonna need a pretty robust battery. Don't try to do, don't try to do a super small battery on this plane. You will destroy it. So just be aware of it. And that's true for just about any twin EDF module or any twin EDF plane that you're gonna deal with. Um, every single one of them we have that's twin EDFs have always been along the lines of battery eaters. So super excited for this plane. Think it's gonna be an amazing flying plane. Obviously you guys have already seen it as the way we have done our videos in this format for a few years now on and off. We've gone unboxes at the beginning. In this case, the unbox build radio setup is gonna be released just like one minute before we release the uh, made and the only reason we do that is because we want the last video to be the video of the flight because that's what most of you are, are going to want to see. Not everybody wants to see all me uh, pontificate on different radio setup and arguments with the federal government, things like this. At the end of the day, this is a hobby. We do it for fun. I don't do this so that I can come home and listen to what the federal government has to say about my life. Screw those people. Screw them. This is a fun thing to do for fun, it is wholesome, it is family friendly, it is technology, it is science, it is all the things that you're preaching you want us to do and you want our young girls to do. And yet you're gonna sit there and try to regulate it like it's some bad thing. You know what? What do you, what do, you do if you want less of something? You tax it. So guess what, morons in charge? If you want less of technology, pilots, women in technology, then why don't you just tax it some more and make it a little harder? That'd be a great idea if you want less of it. So instead, you could back off and let technology flow out of every orifice of the American populace, and then you could get some good out of it. Because guess what happens when a lot of technology happens? You make money, and then you can get off my back. So anyway, we love XFly. Look at this awesome plane. We want to do this for fun. We want our government to be off our backs because it's ridiculous that they're on our backs to begin with because after all we are the people that pay for all their stupid activities so have your voices heard and in this short term experience with this beautiful airliner we have really enjoyed it and we know that you will too so just remember flying these beautiful airplanes is at your fingertips just follow the link in the video description below and don't forget to come back for more here on Brian Phillips RC. We've got your back here. We want you guys flying. We want you flying today. We want you flying tomorrow. We want you flying in perpetuity because this is a lifestyle and you'll find that out really quick when you get into it. And that's why we care here on Brian Phillips RC. So stay tuned. So much more to come. Don't forget to check. If you want to support us financially, but you don't want to buy this plane because it's kind of huge, check the links in the video description below. We got PayPal, we got Patreon. And we also have lots of other planes. Maybe this one's a little bit too big. You want something a little smaller like that. Obviously, there are other planes for other reasons, and they're all really cool. And we do love doing big planes. We love doing small planes. We love doing aviation stuff, PPG stuff, all the different technologies that go into this. We love educating you about these things, just in case you're watching FAA. And so come on back. Let's see what we can do for you. Stay tuned.